What is going on, everybody? Welcome to episode four. Whoa, we made it a month. Episode, oh, God, there's a cat. Episode four oh, well, the <laughs> of the Terrible Gaming Podcast. The, Did this very, happen? the very first and very last episode four of the Terrible Gaming Ooh, Podcast. Look, look at and us this continuing one, this jokes. Titled, this one's titled The One Where Jofu Played the Game. The One Where Jofu, <laughs> yeah, it's like a Friends episode. The One Where Jofu <laughs> Played the Game. So, again, for those of you that do not know, uh, we are the three hosts of the Terrible Gaming Podcast. My name is Grover. Joined as always in the lower left, if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, lower left means nothing if you're watching it on a, an audio service. Mr. Battleflag. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe the audio comes from a slightly lower left. We'll, we'll make sure that it's in the left ear only. Yeah. There you and go. Then, yeah. Uh, as well in the lower right, uh, this is like a, I should be is this Is this the first? No, this is the second uh, yeah. Trump era for uh yes for joe food yes so um, so captain's log we made it two weeks under or so like let's say it's called the first official week because last time it was like the day <laughs> after or like the day like whatever it was yeah so let's D -D just call this like yeah. the first official yeah the first official week so we made it a, a one official week after uh d-day so we're, we're yeah. you know we're we're on rations <laughs> uh water's in short supply it's starting to eat just uh, rice yeah but yeah. every everything is fine. Everything is every, fine. Every, <laughs> yeah. I think I think and to veer to veer a little way way off of video games, we won't go very long. Is the uh, the greatness that has been the Joe Biden memes? Where, yeah, I haven't, I haven't caught on to that yet. Where okay. you you check oh, about they're pretty funny. Where basically they're pictures of of Biden and Obama, and then yeah. it's it's everything from. Biden wanting to make a fake birth certificate of Obama and put it in the Oval <laughs> Office to wanting to wanting to set up the White House like Home Alone to yeah. it's just it's great. I think I love the one where he's leaning over to talk to Obama and the text just says I'm not going to tell him the Wi-Fi password. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah, so anyways, this is the Terrible Gaming podcast where we uh, basically talk about some nonsense, video game related or non-video game related, whatever it might be. Usually video game related. Um, and for the most part, we talk about what video games we've played and what video games Jofu thought about playing. Yeah, However, that's right. This is, such a your... this is such a monumental occasion that I feel like we just need to, we just need to cut the theatrics and jump right into it. Um, hey, hey, Jofu, prepare what have, yourself. Jofu, what have you been playing this <laughs> Oh, week? man. I've been playing uh, a bunch of uh so let's 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 preface this uh so obsidian uh last week we talked about um you know matt made the offhanded comment i'm sure he didn't really mean it but about uh, <laughs> fall, fallout 3 um you know being a good game or whatever it's terrible just, mistakes Don't happen it. it's it's fine so so fallout 4 new vegas uh knights of the republic uh to um freaking like any any good rpg that's ever been made has probably been made by obsidian uh uh the stick of truth <laughs> Um, so now you have Pills of Eternity that just came out. That was that was uh, kickstarted, uh, and now you have a uh, Tyranny. So like the, I've played a, a boatload of this game. It's really freaking like it's 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 everything that I wanted and more. Uh, because I have this issue. So let's, let's preface this and say, the game is is set in a world where uh, the evil guy wins. So like you play a game where the evil's already won. It's like you're like fuck it. You know you can't do anything about it. Like you're that's that already happened. In a um, world where evil has won already. Right, yeah. yeah, so like, <laughs> so let's, let's, let's make this game interesting. So like for me, I always like to be the good guy. Like I always like, even, even if I'm like evil, I st I'm still like very noble. So like, mm -hmm. let's say I'm, I'm evil, uh, I won't kill the kids, right? Like that's, that's, you know, that's where I cut the line off. Or like I'll try to be like the least douchebag I can be in any situation. You know, I try to get, I try to like get the most honorable uh, solution. This game, nope, not so much. You know, take your honor, stick out the fucking window because if you, if you choose, <laughs> listen, this game is the game where you're like, you know what, I'm gonna save that guy. Cool, save that guy. He's gonna go ahead and rape the entire village, kill all the kids. You know, uh, he's gonna make them all turn into slaves. And yeah, uh, if you don't kill the guy, somebody else is gonna take the kids, turn them into slaves, uh, prostitutes, and everything else. And yeah, like this game is like ruthless as far as like look you're you're a bad guy like you are this game does not give you an out to yeah. not be back like even if you decide so like it starts off uh it's a really cool concept um this this you know this, this god like figure kairos 
has been uh, basically taking over the world for the past, you know, three or four hundred years, whatever it is. And you're on the last section of the world he's taken over. And um, and so it's been like four years. So you get to choose like you've you've been in the army for four years and you're basically a uh, what's called fate binder. You get to make like basically your judge, jury and law and you make these decisions for the fucking world. So before you even play the game, you have to make decisions kind of like. Y'all don't play Mass Effect Three, right? So if you play a Mass Effect Three and you and you don't play any of the other games, you can basically pick. Or is it Dragon Age? It might be Dragon Age. Uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. They let you pick like all the decisions from the other games. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. Dragon Age. Pretty, that's yeah, so that's if yeah. you if you haven't played what it is with Dragon Age. Sorry to interrupt, but if no, no uh, if you haven't played Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age Two, then you have a choice to go in. You can go onto a website, um, and you can you can select all of the choices manually. Or if you have an account with um, with the 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 publisher, it will take the saves from your first two games, upload them to this site, so right. that it just ma- so yeah. I and for, so me for example, not playing Origins and not finishing Dragon Age Two, I remember I there was. I don't know if it was PC Gamer or who it was did this awesome like three hour YouTube video basically catching you up on on Dragon Age one and two so that you could make your choices for Inquisition. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's a, that's exactly like that, yeah. But you had the choice or it would manually or automatically upload your yeah. decisions from mm-hmm. the first two games. Yeah, and this game is like starting off it's like that. it's called Conquest. So uh, you basically make all those decisions, and it's super intense because, like, you you make a decision. No matter what decision you make, there's no there's no decision because you know, like, you can have like inaction. Well, any inaction you make is an action, and you're gonna have somebody who's gonna be offended, somebody who's gonna be whatever. Uh, and and there's two main factions that you like on your on the evil guys. There's the uh, uh, what is it? The I, I, fuck them. It, it doesn't matter. There's two like <laughs> major uh, factions, and there's a third faction that I found out about that you can join with as well. But it's kind of like it's kind of like the th- like it's it's a weird it's weird. But if you so during this conquest, you can decide to like save a library. Well, if you if you decide to save a library, that that gives you benefit because you get like the library has a lot of information. So like it's gonna make a certain sect of people happy, but it's gonna make the military pissed. So like the military get pissed off because they have to do more work and they're gonna lose so many people from capturing this library and not just burn it down. Uh, there's like any and they give you like 20 of these options, maybe like 30 options, and you like starting off the game, you already have pissed off half the world and like of the other half the world likes you. Right. So it's kind like, of <laughs> kind of like adding like a bit of civilization into it. Yes, yes, very, very much so. Like I, like I could have played the introduction part of the game as a full game for another like three or four hours just making these hmm. decisions and seeing it's kind of, it, it kind of reminded me of what's that little game we played together uh town of salem yeah like yeah. just like the waiting part of it and like the anxiousness of of, of seeing like what your decision you know did yeah, right and the so psychology you, of it yeah right the psychology of it so like when you start playing the guy like, we start playing the game like you're like just in the game like people are already pissed off at you and like you meet these people and they're like oh you're the fucking dickhead who made us you know uh go attack this library or you killed my family because this is the thing about your your conquest is the guy who uh is you know, doing this entire conquest, he's not just like killing everybody. Like, like there's a certain. He's basically like allowing uh, the people that you conquer to like join your army. So like, so like the people you're fucking over are joining your army. So like, you meet mm. these people and they're like, hey, you kind of you know let these guys rape our village and take all of our people. And you know, uh, it's it's kind of it's it's weird. So or not weird, but it's like pretty brutal in like a very awesome way because the dialogue is uh, is is pretty epic so far. Yeah, so. cool. And so describe like I'm looking at it on Steam right now. It's like a top yeah. down. Yeah, isometric. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Looks uh looks pretty cool. So is it like a, is it like a turn based or is it I haven't looked at I know you uh, looked at it. So the combat it, the combat's not necessarily turn based. You can turn it's a, it's a game like kinda of like Dragon Age One or like Pillars or Bonus okay. Gate where like it encourages you to pause the game and make a decision. Uh, okay. If you play it on like story story mode, apparently you can just basically fall asleep the keyboard because like so far I think I'm like ten hours in I'm, I think 
um, the story by itself is worth is is worth getting into. Uh, so if you don't like the combat, I can understand that. But the combat is fucking awesome because mm-hmm. they have something that I've really wanted in the game for a long time, and that's spell creation. So like you find these little uh, uh, sigils, and like there's other sh- shapes that you can make. So like for example, a sigil might be like a fire sigil. And then, like the other, the shape might be like a cone. So, guess what you have? You have a fucking cone, a fire, fire cone. cone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you can pick up like other, th- yeah. You can pick up, pick up like other things, like enhance it, make it stronger, uh, make it AOE, stuff like that. Like you just find- so it makes like finding stuff in the game very cool. Mm-hmm. So, like you want to like you want to like pickpocket every single thing you can. You want to uh, you know go through er- you know fight everything you can because you don't want to miss. You don't like for me. I don't want to miss like any of these these spell components. Yeah. Right. Um, another thing too, like uh, the heels. There's like a uh, AOE heels. Like it, it, it kind of you can just imagine, um, just mix and match in like all of your spells. You know, uh, and kind of just creating your own your own um, you know your own spells and your own you know I, I don't know. Whatever. So it's almost. Do you think it's a type of game that you'll you'll go back and play again down the road what, to try you, it? Yes, a, I already a, wanna, a different path. Yeah. Yes, I want. I already want to do it because, uh, so like I was saying, like there's like two different main factions, uh, and like er, and at the end of Act One, you basically have to pick like this faction or that faction, and mm-hmm. and not really a big spoiler because like you, you probably would want to know this going into the game, but you can say fuck both of these guys and just go off like renegade by yourself. You don't have mm-hmm. like this game allows you to not pick a faction. Um, and it also allows you to pick a alternate faction, which is basically the good guys. But like when you pick the good guys, it's not like you're a good guy. Like you're still a dickhead. You're, you're, there's like this game gives you no out to be a good guy. Like there's no there's no like okay, Jofu, we know you like being a bad guy. Because like I was the guy who played a, a Sith in a Sword Tour, and yeah. like when I played, I always like because like I have this fascination with like good Sith. I think there could be a good Sith because yeah. there's evil Jedi. Like I, I just you know there's dickhead Jedi. So like like playing Sword Tour, like I would be like the Sith, but I had like my good points were all the way maxed. This game is like no fuck you. You can't do that. Like this is this is not the game for you. Like yeah. you're gonna you're gonna rape and pillage and you're gonna just fuck everybody right closet. You know, it's the hate hate yourself simulator. Yeah, and like and there's and I'll tell you that the two major factions. One of them from like from the outside looking in is like the good faction, and the other one's like just fucking chaotic, fucking just evil. Yeah, they're both pretty fucking evil. Like mm. once, like if, if in D and D terms, if you're familiar with chaotic evil versus like lawful evil, like that's the two choices you have. But they're right, both yeah. pretty fucking evil. Like mm. you, you're making this like in a, in like the chaotic evil, they're they're more like prone to because like I like saving the villages. So the the chaotic evil, like yeah, we're gonna we're gonna let them join our 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 cause. Yeah. So like when they join their cause, because like from like in the in the lawful evil guys are like, no, we're gonna kill everybody and raise their village. Right. So I'm like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to raise their. I don't want to raise their village and kill all the people. Yeah. So when you choose to like save them, this is how you save them. You make them all fight to the death, and um and they have to like bash each other's skulls in, and whoever like becomes victorious gets to live. That's that's <laughs> your that's the game's uh you know, thoughts on like, you know, letting people live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, I wasn't about that life. Uh, I, I decided to start, you know, pillaging and raising villages yeah. because, that's, you know, I, I felt less icky, I guess. So, yeah, and no, I'll have yeah. to check it out. It sounds, uh, yeah. And, and, and another, and like, there's a bunch of like little cool stories I can tell you, like, that, that, that like I remember. And like a lot of times you, you play these games and like, like these storylines, you just, like fucking whatever but like one storyline in particular there was one chick who before the before the the army came she actually slit her entire family's throats uh and just like gave herself to the army so she wouldn't have to like go through the the, the process of like killing everybody in combat so like she killed her husband she killed her mom she killed her mom's husband she killed everybody and was like hey look bros i'm, I'm cool like let, you know her, let me in like, her, her mom's yeah. husband also known as her father <laughs> no, 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 no. Her husband, she didn't know who her father was. She, no, she I see. So the real, the real question is, how much further into the game does it get until it offers you the option to just pay a little bit of extra money to go on at the good side? I would pay it. I would pay it. Like if they give me like a twenty bucks expansion, <laughs> where I could 
like be the good guy, I, I would do that because like I just like for me, I, I like being the good guy. Like I just there's something about being playing these games. Where I'm like, yeah, I want to save the day, and I'm hoping like at the end of this game, I and and I don't know why I'm hoping this, but I'm hoping at the end of the game they're like, yeah, we're, we're, you can take down the bad guy. But I don't think this is me to have a game. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna let me like because like the, the the main bad guy is is basically a god. I don't think like my the way my character is. I don't think my character is gonna turn into a god to kill the main guy. So I don't. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how. It would be great if, if the game ends where either you you like you say that the the main villain is a god. Wouldn't it be great if the game yeah. ends where you are face to face with this god and he either praises you and the game ends or he just kills you and. I think I'd like. I think I'd rather that. Like at this point, my character is so shitty. Like I don't even. <laughs> Like, I enjoy playing him, but I, I, but like if they, if he dies, they're like I'm like good for you. Like it's right. kind of like uh, whatever. I was gonna bring up Breaking, Breaking Bad, but but uh, it's kind of like um, well yeah, it, it's just it's a situation where like if he die when he dies, it's like okay cool that sucks and all, but yeah you're a shithead you deserve to die <laughs> like already. And I'm very I'm like in the act one of the game, and I'm already like yeah that my character's a piece of shit. Like yeah. <laughs> like I just, you know like in a lot of games like you associate yourself with your character like I am totally like fuck this guy this dude's a dick I don't want anything to do with him I have no association with my character you feel at all. ashamed that you're controlling him <laughs> yes. yeah yes hope nobody's <laughs> watching me play this because because I'm a piece of shit right now that's right like I hope nobody hears me read this text out loud because this is pretty shitty yeah, yeah is that's, it? that's the one. There's yeah. no voices, right? It's all text. Yeah, no, there are. It's oh, okay. mostly it's ninety percent. Uh, it's ninety percent text. The voice acting is 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 really good. good. Uh, good. But it's one of those games, man. Oh, so let's uh, just uh, a few more things. Uh, the dialogue system. So, like, uh, if you're familiar with the, I'll, I'll bring a Mass Effect again, but any one of these games where like you talk to your your followers and they're like, how you know how are you doing? And they're like, oh, I'm good. Uh, and you know, like, there's another dialogue tree where it's like, okay, well, you know, tell me about your family or whatever, and that's it. Right. You know, like, you'll, you'll, like, there's like one level deep of of dialogue. Yeah, this game is like, I spent 30 minutes reading dialogue for my character, just a random fucking conversation. Uh, so like, the first dialogue tree was six choices. Mm -hmm. All right, I clicked on one of those choices, and it was six more fucking things of choices. And then, and some of those were like three more dialogue trees. So like. There was like over a hundred conversations or a hundred different dialogue choices between like one like one conversation that I was trying to get through, like just trying to raise my my you know um, uh, the faction with my my character, trying to make him like me more, right. and that mm -hmm. didn't that didn't fucking work out at all. See, and I can one, mm -hmm. I can appreciate that about games where it's not just they they're encouraging you to do more than just get through the main story. It's like they're they're basically telling you to build relationships and attachments to whether it's yourself or other characters by creating okay. these conversations and taking the time to 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 chat with them and utilize that and yeah. the fact that they put all that detail in it is oh yeah is, it, is it awesome. makes me so so let me uh bring this up do y'all watch westworld at all do y'all watch it yet no but okay I've heard, so I've heard it. okay super super good but so I'll, I'll say this about this game and i'll say this about westworld and it, well any kind of spoilers westworld makes me look at characters differently than i would before so with this game like it makes me look at characters and my character at a different angle than i would before because like i said i identify like in most games like i identify myself as the character that i'm playing because i made those decisions and generally a game lets me make the decisions that i would make in real life this game makes me think about like how i attach myself to the people i'm traveling with and associate because like for me i'm like man these guys are shit bags like i don't like like fuck yeah. these guys it makes me think about them differently same thing with like westworld like watch it's very it's a very good show to make you like to make you question why you attach to certain characters like it, right. it kind of it, it's, it's really it's really interesting and this game mm -hmm. does the same thing for me it makes me like 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 i like my character because it's my character but it makes me like wonder, like man, like you like this character, but he's a pretty shitty person. Like he's <laughs> not good at all. But you know, so yeah. But and I I wouldn't recommend this game for anybody who doesn't like these type of games. So if you're not into reading, if you're not into the combat, if you, like I wouldn't like the combat's it, it it's it's kind of it's very slow for these type of games. Um, uh, but the combat's good. I wouldn't play it for the combat though. Usually these games I'd, I'd play the combat like pillars over this game so far uh, was much better as far as combat goes. Uh, and But I just wouldn't recommend it for somebody who's not, just just doesn't like the genre. Just so like I wouldn't yeah. to, re to reiterate, Tyranny is considered an adventure RPG. 
So if you hate adventure RPGs, stay away. But uh, if you like adventure fun, RPG? it's it's mm. well on Steam. It's categorized as an adventure RPG. Because I would I would consider like a, a ARPG like a Final Fantasy, you know, like fifteen. That one's coming out. I would I would I would categorize that as a ARPG. Mm. I wouldn't. This would be like a more like a strategic RPG. Like, I don't know. Uh, mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. that's that's exciting to ask you what uh, yeah. what games you've been playing and and it, yeah. and it just hasn't been crickets. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm super excited about it. like I, I I'm I, it's kind of obsessed with me tonight. I can't play it at all um, because like uh, I've I've only been able to like sneak like an hour or two. But I'm like I'm seriously super excited to like get him back into it and just like be a dick. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's 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 refreshing. So nice. Well, let's switch it over to Mr. Battle Flag. Mm-hmm. How's the world of video games been treating you this week? Um. Well, after we were talking about Final Fantasy 15 last week, I kind of sort of started getting the rpg itch again and mm. knowing that i well currently have final fantasy 15 on pre-order so i thought well Oops. i should do a couple of things probably i first of all played the platinum demo that i downloaded a long time ago mm. um and kind of checked it out a little bit um oh. it was interesting i haven't played, played any of the demos. i just yeah it's kind of i mean it's it's interesting, and I, I watched a few kind of trailer videos. I only watched a few for Final Fantasy XV thus far, and right. don't want to watch the like infinite glut of videos about it that <laughs> happened after the first few. Um, so Did I, you watch I the movie yet? sorry, watch the movie yet? The movie, the uh, yeah. Kingslave. Check it out; it's really good. No, okay, yeah. I will do that. Um, but so from what I played of it, I'm I'm intrigued enough that. I do want to see more. I'm not 100% sure if that means it's going to be good or if it's going to veer in some ways that I don't enjoy as much. But it's from what what I got, like, it took a little bit to get the combat into my brain and work, um, which I will still probably need to adjust to. But, like, as far as, I mean, the visuals are are the visuals. that you, Everybody's seen the videos. Um, they look fantastic. Right. Um, I'm sure they're going to look fantastic. Um, the tough to tell with the story and the dialogue and such. It's it looks it looks pretty decent for right now. I know some of what, Final what's Fantasy. The line? Some of Is there a storyline in the demo? I know you have like Carbuncle. Uh, yeah, it's not really. You're kind of plunked down at a point. Like it, basically, it didn't tell me anything that I didn't already know from reading stuff and watching. Okay, from, it's, correct it's, me if I'm there. wrong, but from what I understand, it's more of just like a like a stress test demo, right? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Like it's it gives you gives you the gameplay, it doesn't necessarily get you into the the story or the world or anything. Okay. So yeah. okay. it was just more of a yeah, like you said, a glorified just, tech it's demo. It's just just the tip, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it was I they played enough of that that I thought it could kind of uh, cuz I was I when I pre-ordered it, I was on the fence thinking cuz I really didn't enjoy what I played at Final Fantasy 13. Mhm. And didn't play any of the progressive ones because I didn't enjoy it. But I was a little hesitant, and I, I do like a lot of Final Fantasy games. So this kind of made me, you know, calmed my jets a little you bit. You mean you didn't, you didn't check out Final Fantasy 13-4, Lightning on Vacation? <laughs> Lightning visits <laughs> or, Paris. Or, yeah. or, or Lightning Final Fantasy 13-5, Lightning visits the in-laws. Uh, <laughs> 13-6 with a vengeance. 13-7, <laughs> resurgence. Lightning, resurgence. Light, 13-8, light, Lightning harder. Yeah. yeah. And next year we're going to get uh, 13-9, um, Lightning Tycoon. So that, 13, that's 13-10 rounds out the... Uh, the package with lightning and the crystal skull actually <laughs> yeah you're gonna have some, uh, gonna have some lawsuits to deal with it. <laughs> um and so and to kind of go on the other way of that i jumped in and, and played an old rpg that i hadn't played in a while and Good. again in the rpg thing on the brain so i did super mario rpg and nice. i played, got back into that and played through the first two or three worlds of that and mm-hmm. That game so much. Wait, fun. you own Super Mario RPG? Yeah, yeah, I got it just like a oh. couple of months ago. Mm. I thought Doing I was the that. only cool, terrible gaming bro that owned it. No, I got nope. some trade in stuff that are right. video games. I remember so, that. Yeah, okay. I grabbed that. Um, and I mean, that's, it's just it's so good. That like shows, shows with, with things like RPGs, 
how you can make a great game and really not make it overly complicated. I think like, I think it's time the world had another Mario RPG game. Could you imagine like a three Mario RPG? It's never gonna happen. But. No, I know, I know, but I think it's I think it's time. Yeah, yeah. No, and it's just yeah, it's it, it's nice to. I, I, I it's nice because I played that a long time, but. I know it's not the same, but like Kingdom Hearts is 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 a pretty good like since Square couldn't get Nintendo, they got you know Disney themselves. <laughs> so, Disney. I'm, I'm, yeah. It's funny that you mentioned Kingdom Hearts because I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this briefly. Is I okay. noticed I, I I didn't read anything about this at all, but I noticed on Amazon in the um, in the new bestsellers. Uh, all of a sudden, Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5, which I believe were re-released on PS3, yep. mm-hmm. are now being remastered for PS4. Yes, they are. Yes, that is a, that is so, a fact. So now this is, um, this is yet again a remastered, remastered uh, yeah. so game package. I, I, I want re, this, though. Re, re. I, I want this because... Uh, I never got to play the um, the remastered versions. So, so here's so, here's a question that I have because yeah. I've never played a Kingdom Hearts game, and mm-hmm. I watched um, I watched somebody stream Kingdom Hearts one, and it looked dumb. But mm-hmm. just if if I'm interested, is one and a half and two and a half are they the first and the second game, or are they different? Yes. Or I don't. Like, yes. what, yeah, according to, one according to what I know, they're the first and second games, and there's a couple of other ones that were game gba games i think that were sort of like additions with the most fucking ridiculous names ever yeah you get uh so with 1.5 you get uh final mix so like the final mix is like square man they just kept like releasing more content for like the japanese versions of these games right uh so they had like the final mix versions which they really added like a bunch of like storyline so if you like convoluted storylines which i love like <laughs> this is what like metal gear solid 3 metal gear solid 1 and 2 you know 1 2 and 3 like if you if you love those storylines like you'll love kingdom horse storyline because it's like you know the most convoluted cannot follow this shit worth like i've watched like documentary videos explaining this shit like this character right here is really this character, but this character's soul. So this actually makes this other character with this other. But you, but if you go back, uh, you know, three hundred centuries in this one, he's actually not any of those characters. But he split the like. I am not making this up. That like quote what I just said, yeah. and that is a real character. Okay, guys. <laughs> uh, but it's <laughs> the, there's like like uh, documentaries on these fucking games, and it's I still don't know what the fuck's going on. I love it. It's a it. video game version of Mulholland Drive, and so. Words. So here's here's what it says. It says Kingdom so Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 plus 2.5 remix. Mm. Uh, six yeah, of, uh, six of the series' most highly regarded titles in one yep. HD mix for the first time on PS4. More than 150 mm. hours of gameplay. So mm. one thing that I will say about this, looking at it, that I can respect is that it's not a sixty dollar game. It's, it's worth forty. Well, it's it's sixty five Canadian, so that's probably forty forty nine dollars like US. US? So it's the same thing as as the Ezio trilogy that's coming out. It's not a sixty dollar game either. It's a forty five fifty dollar game. So yeah, I will I will and say I, looking at that. 60, yeah. yeah, like so I I'm looking at that. It says the release date is March twenty eighth, which makes me think that Kingdom Hearts three is just never coming out because. Oh, Kingdom, it's not coming out for a while, dude. It, because Kingdom like, Hearts it's coming out for a while. It's Kingdom not. Hearts three was announced at E three twenty thirteen. Yeah, but. But so is Final Fantasy VII. I think Final Fantasy VII is right. going to come out before Kingdom Hearts III. Uh, I don't think we're going to see that game for another three years. I really don't. So or, what, or maybe... what, what comes out first, Kingdom Hearts III or um, Hideo Kojima's new game? <laughs> <laughs> like, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Um, What's it called? Yeah. Death, Death Strand, Standing, Stranding or something like that? Deathy, I deathy, deathy, say, deathy, I, already, I already forgot about it because I already know it's not coming out until like 2020. It's a, yeah. the, and it's gonna have nothing to do with the fuck he's talking about now. It's gonna be an open world action RPG. Let's let's be uh, real. He's he's developing it for the PS5. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's what if it's just a 20 hour naked Norman Reedus walking simulator? <laughs> where you there's walk all over the place, see a floating I, uh, baby, and end a of segment story. people are gonna enjoy this. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd I'd ship it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, and the only I, other video games I played during the week, I was uh, went out of town, um, see some friends up north of me in Edmonton, and we ended up 
going to something that's new in the city, I think, from what I was told, um, they had an arcade bar, which mm-hmm. went up in one of the old spots I used to go when I was in university called Beercade. And we played some Pac-Man and we played some Ninja Turtles and we played some pinball. It was a fun time. So it was better than the shitty one we went to in Vegas. Well, you know what? The, for sheer volume of what was in the one in Vegas, that was pretty badass. Yeah, but However, the, the, I couldn't drink a beer while I was doing it in Vegas. Yeah, the, so. the, thing, the thing that was stupid about the one in Vegas is A, it was no alcohol, and B, for the most part, it was like you, they, had, they had booths, but it was like you had to pay to sit in those booths. But then they had like recordings of games playing. So it's like, you know, yeah. when you go to a bar and you have the football game, the basketball game, the hockey game, the college game. Instead, it was here's pre-recorded Street Fighter. Here's, yeah. here's pre-recorded Tekken. Here's pre-recorded Virtual Fighter. <laughs> Well, and the thing about the one in Vegas that we went to that they, I think, were really pushing, that I could tell, was like the at-the-table bottle service gaming. Yeah. Which is just cash. Like, they didn't really have that at this one, so I'll well, give Vegas, the point right? to the one in Edmonton for that. But, yeah, that that was, I mean, they. I think they probably had maybe the same amount of, of arcade cabinets, maybe a few more in the Edmonton one, but not, like... Mm-hmm not ones i was dying to play necessarily they had some good stuff though it was uh yeah. it was a lot of fun and they have drank some beer so <laughs> <good>. yeah. today's <laughs> secret ingredient is beer God, that's so great have you ever seen that jofu the iron no. chef the iron the chef iron... episode where they did beer or was that I'll iron chef america that later yeah it was iron, iron chef, chef america, america but it was okay. like that the like the Japanese descendant dude that jumps around as and my as my great stick. uncle once said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he always pulls off the cloth of like the whatever the mystery ingredient is and usually does this dramatic like hand gesture to it and mm-hmm. then it usually will say it with some kind of force like mushrooms or cabbage. <laughs> this one was here and he went full ham. Yeah. It was like Beer. So yeah, <laughs> if, for anyone that's listening, if you Google Iron Chef America beer, you'll see the yeah, you'll find you'll, and it's it's one of the greatest moments in television history. Let's be honest. You're welcome. Yeah. Um. So yeah, me. Um. It's been kind of an off week for me with games, um. Oh, mainly man. because, uh, as we mentioned in last episode, uh, Desert Bus Ten is currently running, and because I'm a dork, and. Um, yeah, you can see it's on, it's on the TV on right now. TV right now, and I've I've got it up on the other monitor, muted. But, um, <laughs> I've been watching a lot of that, probably more than I care to admit. Uh, one of the nights, I even slept on the couch while it was on the TV, <laughs> and woke up periodically through the night. But uh, because of that, I've been limited. But some things I have been playing is um, I started the campaign for Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Oh, um, nice! How is it? I heard it's I great. Have, uh, I'm only about two hours in, mm. so I'm probably so about 50%. Uh, I'm probably close to halfway done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which much. is which is I mean I've played I've played all the Call of Duty games and usually they're anywhere from like five to eight hours. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I've met Jon Snow. I've met Conor McGregor. This was before he won his second title. Um, oh okay. Give my where's my fucking <laughs> where's second my fucking belt? second belt? I'd like to take this chance. To address the entire <laughs> roster and apologize to absolutely fucking no one. Nope. Oh, dude. It, oh, that was such a great fight. Uh, oh, my God. But, yeah, so I've been playing that, and uh, you know what? It's it's very much a Call of Duty campaign. It feels like a Call of Duty campaign. Um, and I mentioned, I think I mentioned this last episode, a few of the writers for uh, Naughty Dog, who worked on Uncharted, Last of Us, have uh, yeah. helped with the story of it. So, so far, it's so good. Um, and I actually, for the first time, have played uh, modern warfare remastered multiplayer um which it's it's so funny and and everybody saw it coming but i i would i would love to see the player base between the two because i think there's probably more people playing modern warfare remastered which floors me because they paid they paid an extra 20 they paid 80 to 100 dollars depending on what edition you bought and and why aren't even they, and aren't even touching the main game like why wouldn't yeah. they just release that during the summer or something like I don't like I, you know you what that I don't know I don't, Activision's a weird company I guess but it's I know they I know they talked a lot about not releasing that I think they're gonna look at their numbers and the way things are going and they're absolutely gonna put that like 
in six months on whatever for 20 bucks if, like if there's they, no if they way do, there's going to be a lot of pissed off people that paid a hundred dollars mm-hmm. for sure the full but i mean thing. they look at the numbers if like they're a company they're already charging extra for this kind of game if if they look and see that like in six months and they won't be able to look this far along but if in six months infinity warfare's numbers have gone like well, this and modern warfare numbers have only gone like this here's here's a great example so it's a it's a tuesday night it's prime time on the west coast right now and i'm on twitch so right now uh, Infinite Warfare has 8,000 viewers, and Modern Warfare Remastered has 10,000 viewers. So mm. it's a it's a little bit of a quiet time because everybody's playing. Wow. Oh, promoted. Okay. I mean, League of Legends, Overwatch, Hearthstone, Counter Strike. Shocking. But yeah, because Watch Dogs 2 released today, um, so that's on there. But uh, so excited. so it's uh, it's it's funny because I've been watching the numbers between Modern Warfare Remastered and Infinite Warfare because I'm in nerd and like to look at numbers and stuff like that fantasize or i, I fantasize over oh but wow. it's it's been very much even like sometimes infinite warfare has more depending on if the pros are streaming or whatnot but you look mm-hmm. at you look at all of the um the content creators that are were or are call of duty players that aren't the pros they're they're all playing modern warfare remastered they're Mm-hmm. They're putting most of their time in there, and I understand why because of the nostalgia factor with it. But yeah. it's 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 very obvious what Call of Duty players want is they want that that return to the boots on the ground feel and not the jetpack styles that the new ones are coming. And I'll be honest, like I've I I played very little, if no, multiplayer in Modern Warfare when it first came out. I think I remember playing it on Xbox, I finished the campaign, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to jump into multiplayer, and in the first game, I some kid fucked my mom, and, and all that, <laughs> and it's just, it, it was just like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm done with it, because that was back just, when. Just I, one? That's well, I, was, I mean, they all sound the same, right? But, um, so for me, it's because the first Call of Duty that I really focused on multiplayer was Advanced Warfare, which was the ridiculous jetpack and your exosuit that you could bounce off fucking walls and so i don't really have the um, multiplayer experience of boots on the ground call of duty so it was very different Mm. for me and like there was times where i kept like trying to to double jump and and slide and 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 you just can't you can't do that shit in modern warfare remastered and so it was it was a it was a different feel but i I liked it a lot um so yeah it's basically a large map cs go in a lot of ways but see the thing the thing that i I like about modern warfare remastered and, and i mean Obviously, everyone knows the Call of Duty 4 maps that have played it for the old years, but they're very yeah. basic, and they're all just a square for the yeah. most part. And there's the one the one map, I have no idea what it's called, but it was the, the campaign mission where you had to get to the helicopter and then defend mm-hmm. around the helicopter. That yeah. map is so small, and it's kind of like... Um, like Nuketown was, where Nuketown is a very small map, and it was just like die, 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 die. Same thing, like it's... It, but it's it's fun and it's different and and it's and and the weapons everybody uses an M4 or a sniper and that's about it. But yeah. um, so I've been playing that and it's I can very easily see. I mean I don't play Call of Duty all day every day, but I could see myself sharing time between the two. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, not only that, I've I've kind of been because I've been spending a lot of time watching Desert Bus. I've been playing games while while watching it, and I've been playing a lot of indie games. So I've. Uh, I've revisited uh, Cluster Truck. For those of you that haven't uh, haven't played Cluster Truck, it's basically um, a combination of Mirror's Edge with um, the lava or the floor is lava, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. if, if you haven't played it, it's you're you're you literally have a have have to get to the finish by jumping from truck to truck to truck, and it looks it looks hilarious. It's it it got my heart rate up when I play it, and uh, <laughs> what I, I game is this? Cluster Truck, it's called. Okay. Um, yeah. And I I think it's it was made popular by um, well no I shouldn't say it was made popular but uh, Jack Septicai who's a very famous YouTuber did and still constantly is doing a series on it so it's gained a lot of mainstream attention because of him. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been playing that for a little bit, just just kind of messing around. Uh, and Joe mentioned it earlier. I've actually, I was actually playing Town of Salem earlier today. Um, <laughs> and 
I haven't I haven't ever played ranked, and I don't think I ever will play ranked, just because I love huh. I I it's... love I love just the sheer childish idiocrity that there is in normals, yeah. and the meta ev- everything the meta everything from like Harambe is still mentioned. I think I think in one of the games I was playing, somebody tried to spoil the new Star Wars, which came out yeah, a, I was a gonna year say, ago. That's probably still happening. I remember. I remember when I I watched. I went and watched Star Wars. I think on the Monday after its release, and and so with so I'll tra- backtrack a bit with Town of Salem. There's something um, for those that don't know. You can have a death note. So basically, whatever your your class. So Town of Salem is basically mafia. For those that have ever played Mafia in real life, Town of Salem. So, anyways, if you're the doctor, you can keep in your death note who you healed and when. If you're an investigator, a, a, a sheriff, uh, an escort, whoever, you can keep track. So, in your death note, people can look at it and get and piece clues together. And, and what was happening was, um, I mean, the movie's been over for a year, so I think it's okay for me to spoil the moment in Star Wars. But everybody's in their death note was nothing but. Kylo Ren kills Han Solo, <laughs> and and no joke. Probably for a month, you would or or more or more. There was Star Wars spoilers in Town of Salem, and and people were naming themselves Han Solo dies or like the all or like the, if you were the serial killer in their in their kill note, they would they would spoil Star Wars and. And 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 I think I think the part that I love about playing normals in Town of Salem is that I don't have to be all serious and and if I fuck up somebody's gonna tell me to go back and play normals you you noob mm. but like it's easy to troll first of all and I love I love trolling but <laughs> just the the I love I love people's names that they come up with and I love that the idiots that just are very obviously the jester and try and play it off like they're this god player because they're they're gonna get lynched and but so i've been playing town of salem um and i actually it is so good i miss i miss playing it's so good like we need to we need to do some town of salem playing again um but so i've been playing those and I, i i even dipped a little bit back into uh into prison architect i i was just bored one day and was playing it um I've I've been involved in playing Prison Architect since like Alpha Ten, which was God a long time ago. And Hipster. The game, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the game I can remember the the reason I fell in love with this game was not not because of the game itself, but the the trailer on Steam when uh, when this game oh, was I in heard. its early releases. It was like these these prisoners are wandering around and the one guy they're british and the one guy was doing like a batman voice and he'd be like these prisoners just walk around with with power drills for no reason we're working on that or these guys grab their dinner and go eat in the shower or (laughs) this guard is currently trapped in a fire there's no code to save him yet (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so, so they were they're were very upfront with like look yeah. you're playing a very early access game um and I, <laughs> and it, and it's changed so much and I, I i just love playing prison architect because it's just it's one of those games that you can just jump in anytime and and continue a prison or start a new one and and do it completely different like you can you can uh you can control what uh like if you have um dangerous prisoners versus like your casual prisoners um you can separate them in certain wings or you can you can like purposely try and get get prisoners killed or you can hire snitches and and like it's just it's so great because you can you can focus the game in a billion different ways that you want if you haven't checked it out i would encourage even if you don't want to play it go look up some youtube videos sorry I think I think it officially think it officially is, yeah. released in the spring this year. Yeah, but it's it's wow. it's officially out now. Yeah, but it was in it's, it was it it's was a, yeah it's it's a more fun Sim City than oh. the new Sim City. <laughs> it, it's uh, a good time. I think it was in alpha for probably about two years. But unlike mm-hmm. a game, and I've mentioned this before, like DayZ, which is still in alpha after what three years, they they 
were very much aware that it was an alpha and made it known to you that hey look you're you're not buying this game to play the game now you're buying the game to a help us stress test and work through bugs and see like that's for me that's what i really like about an early access game where they they in the trailer it's like here's the community forums we want you to post things suggestions whatever it is and we I got want... a question yeah did arc ever get released did arc arc is officially not released yet no okay um, sorry. it it's it's uh it's still in early access it's in early access on xbox one still um they were doing a they were doing an extra life charity this week and i was watching it for a little bit and they were showing it off on ps4 so it's eventually coming to playstation as well but well they're getting iron man suits right there arc has so much shit in it now that like <laughs> it's 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 honestly from when you stop playing it's a completely different game there's really there's there's hundreds of dinosaurs there's a new map there's a dlc a called new map. there's a new map that you can play called the island um okay there's a dlc called scorched earth where instead of why, being, being why is there a dlc for a fucking game that's not out yet i'm just so know. confused but uh for a game that hasn't been out they've they've sure had um lots of popularity community involvement they've had um I'm not going to call it an eSport, but they had those uh, uh, survival, survival of the, the fittest. fittest. Uh, yeah. They've had contests at, um, I don't know if it was at a PAX or where it was, but um, again, that, that's another one of those games where they've uh, they've at least been actively involved with their community and, and growing it and and updates almost daily versus you look at you look at those those other ones like Daisy and it's just that's yeah. that's how you don't do an early access game right but getting back to prison architect again like that's Sorry. what i that's what i loved about it was is they basically said you're you're purchasing the experience of building the game with us and we want you mm -hmm. every time we release a new alpha we want you to get in there and check it out and and let us know how it is and and we'll yeah. make changes and make changes and it's basically and, crowdsourcing your your test group, right? Yeah, well, that's and, good. Though. I mean, and yeah. and like that when I mean I hate early access games because for the most part you think okay I'm just buying an unfinished product and they're just in it to get money and they're being lazy because to be frank Daisy has kind of ruined that for a lot of people. Yeah, but, I mean even to be fair I guess even a game like Dota Two was considered to be an early access for like two or three years and then it officially released in 2015 which right it was funny because it had had like three world championships <laughs> before its yeah. official release but um like that's the thing is if you're if you're gonna have an early access game you need to make sure that you're actively involved with the community and basically yeah. making it known that you're not just in it to to grab money but um well, i think in you know, that you kind of gotta have a strong community manager and you know yeah and with that really yeah, going up and saying oh thank you for playing this you're gonna go and help this that's one thing actually doing it's the other thing right and if if you get a game that says oh yeah we're really gonna do this and it, it turns out three years later it's like oh we're thank you so much for the help and input it's like no you're not moving like it it doesn't take that long even if right. you're producing a game as you know a one or two person show so it's at least good to to see that they, you know, they have a plan and they're following through with it. They're not just sort of, oh, we have a game and we we love the people that play it. And I I have a feeling that that probably stumbled into with DayZ because of how many people latched onto it in the streaming community. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, that is already quite huge. And if they do come up with some kind of big, I know they've made some, you know, additions to it, but... If they do come out with something big and new and some change, and yeah, those are the people that come back and go, "Oh, it's not as fun anymore." Oh, I don't like this. Then you may have, you know, shot yourself in the foot. So yeah. they, it, it's too bad because they're kind of taking advantage of the fact that they're already popular and don't have a finished game out. Well, not only that, but they've sold millions of copies of the game. That's like the thing. Two, or, two or three million copies at thirty dollars a piece, like. Mm -hmm. They, uh, they've, 
kind of shot themselves and they they released like I've been I've been following the the patches that they release and they released this massive patch a couple months ago that completely ruined the game. And oh, yeah. and basically nobody was playing it until they released a patch a couple weeks ago where all of a sudden people are checking it out again, right? Yeah. So patch the patch. <laughs> yeah, like uh, honestly that's kind of what it's been. But Yeah. Mm. So so yeah, it's been a bit of an off week for me for gaming, but I've still been playing a little bit. Desert Bus will be over on the weekend and then I'll get back to my normal scheduled programming. Yeah, and then you can start playing Final Fantasy fifteen in two weeks. I still I still can't wait to to get to get my case and then open it up and then just to see a little sticky note that says coming March twenty seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so Conan, Conan triggered the internet. Um, <laughs> and I love it. That's so funny. <laughs> people are up in arms. He did the clueless gamer on Final Fantasy 15. And, you know, we we're talking about this before we started, but like, the, like I'm looking at NeoGAF right now and there are, there's 30 <laughs> something pages and people are just triggered. Like there's like, there's, there's like, you know, people who are upset about Donald Trump and then like like half level below that is people who are triggered at Trump <laughs> O'Brien. I was say, people, are, people have, have stopped rioting President-elect <laughs> Trump and turned their attention to TBS Studios and Conan O'Brien. Yeah. Oh my god, it's... it's And now like, like, the, 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 the clueless gamer he did is, is, is glorious. It was really funny. Like, I mean, and y'all know how you know how excited I am for this game. Right. But like, it didn't it didn't deter me from this game, but, but it but it's definitely fucking funny. I mean, yeah. Well, I, oh, mean, yeah, I think I think with something like with that, especially when it's Conan, you have to take it with a grain of salt and understand right. that there is a massive amount of satire involved with what he does. And, right. Um, like I can I can remember when um, he was on. I don't know if it was NBC or what his late late or mm. uh, his his old show, and yeah. uh, he had Triumph was was mm. one of the reasons why his show became mainstream and mm-hmm. and when triumph would go to um the the star Trekkie convention the, the yeah. st- he went to the uh the star wars release for episode one i think oh god and yeah. i can i can remember how mad star trek fans were at this fucking puppet dog with mm. the hand of of a stand-up comic behind him and like people and it's same thing even with uh i remember he did i haven't seen i haven't seen this what's what's sorry what's clueless gamer or whatever it's called mm-hmm. yeah that's yeah. his he, segment yeah i remember he did uh he did witcher 3 mm-hmm. and <laughs> and all he really did was focus on like running around trolling and then i think they talked about where you have sex on a horse maybe or <laughs> Or something like that, and like that's, but that's. I think if if people take what a stand-up comedian on a late-night TV show, yeah, has to yeah. say as as serious, then so. But I mean, again, it is it is the internet, and everybody has a degree in in the internet. Yeah. But. Well, so and you know what? They have the whole sub like video game thing. Whenever it comes to anything that where it's like. Oh, the mainstream is now talking about video games or right. somebody like that. That's a comedian that has, you know, he has an agenda. He's making something that's funny. Right. Even if he liked the game, he'd still make jokes about it. He may right. not make fun of it, but video, like video game people, Joe, you hit it on the head. Commenters, YouTube commenters, video game commenters are some of the worst because they <laughs> lack a, it seems like either they just get, really butthurt about the fact that someone's making fun of my hobby. Right. Your hobby's yeah. weird. Video game why, hobby is strange. Why don't you have the same opinion as me? A great a yeah, great example exactly. of this is <laughs> jo, Jofu and I were very... Well, I was, because of Jofu, very involved with the release of Xenoblade Chronicles X. And we've, <laughs> I think we've talked about this before, but I remember it, it... I can't remember what it was given on IGN. But it was given. Oh my God. It was given. It was given a decent number, not a great number. But oh my God. IGN, IGN at the end of their their review articles, they have comment sections. So it's like if you've linked your Facebook account or whatever it is, you can leave comments. And and the amount of hate. And I, I remember the one one comment they gave was it something. 8.2. Yeah, they gave it an eight point two, which which is you know what holds up. It's pretty pretty solid. That's a really good score. Yeah. 
And honestly, that's a higher score than I'd give it. But um, I remember that the, the one comment that stood out for me was someone was so irate that they could give Metal Gear Solid 5 a 10 and Xenoblade an 8.2 and how basically they've ruined their lives because they have said that Metal Gear Solid 5 is a better game than Xenoblade Chronicles X, the <laughs> game they've been waiting their whole life for to come out. Yeah. <laughs> and again, that's NeoGAF is, is a prime example of um, people's that just have outlandish opinions that feel like they're right because they own a keyboard. And, and I, I can just imagine what people are, are saying about this. Because, I mean, to be fair, Final Fantasy has probably one of the biggest followings of fandom, has one of the biggest fan followings in all of video yeah. games. Because, Certainly I mean, that's, the longest. Well, that's, that's, that's the thing is, you think about Final Fantasy, especially you look at, I mean, the Japanese market, Final Fantasy is like their poster baby, right? Yeah. And and anyone that grew up that was born in the 80s grew up playing Final Fantasy Final Fantasy 3 on Super Nintendo is probably there's not a lot of people that are gamers that can say they haven't played Final Fantasy 3 on Super Nintendo, yeah. right? And 7 to that credit. And and Those 7, two. right? So they've got they've got such attachment and for me like if I was to if I was to talk about my favorite video games of all time, two Final Fantasy games would probably fall within my top ten, mm. and 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 so many people have such strong and they're and like Jofu, you're you're a prime example is that you're you're if Final Fantasy fifteen is not good, you're going to be extremely disappointed because of because of the hype, right? Yeah, well, not really. So like for me, it's it's, it's I, I'm not really. I, I just want a really good RPG. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not like it. That's why it's. It, I have a lot of emotional because I have a lot of emotional uh, 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 attachment toward this game. It's. Yeah. It has nothing to do with. Uh, you know, it. It has a little bit to do with Final Fantasy. Like Final Fantasy games can be bad, so it's not like you know this is the only the first bad Final Fantasy game. There's been Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy. Sorry. And uh, seven. And so, like, I, like <laughs> triggered. I understand. The internet is triggered. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I will, yeah we'll, we'll, I'll trigger the entire internet with that one. Uh, <laughs> so, like, for me, for me, uh, you know, once you play Final Fantasy VI, and then you get the, the dog shit game of... Uh, anyways, so... <laughs> uh, and Crown Trigger, come on. Like, you get Crown Trigger, Final Fantasy VI, and then Final Fantasy... Oh, I mean, uh, come the fuck on. Like, that dog shit. Anyways. Um, <laughs> trigger. Uh, I, uh... Yeah, I digress. Uh, so, uh... What were we talking about? We're talking about good games. Oh, so it's not like you wanting a good that. RPG. Yeah. Yeah, I just want a good RPG, man. I just want a good story. Like I, I enjoy these stories. So I got the same thing with. Yep. You want a good RPG, but you haven't think, played Witcher Three. I think uh, so. Yeah, like I know, like I like these open world games, like these open world like I like Final Fantasy Thirteen because it's a it's a very linear story. Like right. I like very linear like. Mm -hmm. Linear to a to a degree, like Witcher. My ADHD does not fucking work well with that. Because once I have, again, like, I, I remind all of our viewers that this man is the one who, when he buys or plays a game, the first thing he asks is, "Can I cheat to win?" <laughs> yeah. Friendly, friendly so, <laughs> reminder of who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Um. So uh, yeah, I probably should play Witcher next. That probably be like in in this because uh. Charity is not that long. I think it's like twenty some hours. So I'm probably like yeah. I looked up on how 30. to beat, and it said it said around thirty hours. So yes, yeah, so I'll probably uh, you know, next week I'll probably beat that. It's actually, the holidays are soon, right? So, uh, in ten days is so I'll probably beat it before um, yeah, I'll probably beat it right before uh, Final Fantasy. So I probably won't have time to get into The Witcher, but I I need to remind me on that. I, I need to get into that game. Yeah, but yeah, I just I mean like when I see like RPG like the you know I don't know fantasy type which 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 is you know whatever but it's it, it's a different thing like this grandiose scale you know you're saving the fucking universe type you know type thing uh kingdom hearts uh you know this is, i don't know this is, it's, it's different man i don't know like even well, final, play, mm. like the final fantasy games are not the style of the old ones that we all remember being great or not great or whatever are kind of not in vogue right now 
Like if you if you took the combat of anywhere from Final Fantasy V to Final Fantasy IX and put it in a mm-hmm. game now, like a new AAA whatever, you're probably going to get a whole bunch of people that are playing it going like, combat is boring, it's just pushing A, da-da-da-da-da. Like that's, those kind of games aren't in vogue. More of the right. Witcher style of RPG or the Fallout Action style. Action-based RPG. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's not, so it, it's they're not going the that way. For me. I, I like the combat. I like the combat they're doing, the Kingdom Hearts type style combat. Like I prefer that combat mm-hmm. uh, just because it doesn't. it's not as, as dull after, yeah. you know, fucking... 40 hours of playing it it's still pretty you know uh it, it especially advancements so i haven't played 15 but yeah no one no one are hoping they went with the route of uh you know very quick and you the entire game you're progressing your the way you play the the, the game uh mm-hmm. i'm more interested in again with the storyline so we talked about um uh mafia so like mafia that, that was like week one right we're talking about mafia yeah, yeah. So like Mafia, that game was dog shit. Like the actual game was dog shit. But like, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm very interested in the story. So like, you know, Grover made a good point. Like, you haven't played Witcher. Like, yeah, I need. I probably really should play Witcher. Yeah. Uh, it's probably like my next game. I probably invest in. Uh, but like Mafia, like I knew. I going into Mafia. Like I love Mafia stories. I love you know Godfather. Mm-hmm. I love fucking uh, Casino. I love you know like those. I love those stories. So like for me, Mafia Three was a like I love that game. I played. You know, I'll pay full price for that game. I didn't. Yeah. It's, it's like dog shit. It's, it's like Grand Theft Auto Five. Even mm. if even if you you're not into the whole multiplayer aspect, the GTA Five campaign is one of the greatest campaigns and stories ever in video games, in my opinion. Just mm. because you you have, and I mean, same thing with with some of the older Grand Theft Auto games, because you get immersed in these characters and this world that, mm. and and any RPG, any any campaign where it's an actual game and not just part of a game like it's hard to, it's hard to get emotionally involved with somebody in like a call of duty or battlefield campaign where it only lasts five six hours right but yeah when you're when it's taking you 30 40 50 hours to finish a campaign of a game and like but mm-hmm. when i by the time i had finished grand theft auto 5 campaign it was like i i knew who Franklin was, I knew who Michael was, I knew who Trevor was, and I had these these emotional attachments to them and mm. and kind of where they came from and where they And you cared where it ended up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I yeah. I had I had invested interest in the characters and and kinda like life is strange. Right. Well that's why so many <laughs> we talked about we talked about Mass <laughs> Effect last week a little bit. Yeah. And same thing where where so many people have these emotional attachments and and dragon age we'll talk about that again is another prime example mm. of of characters that that people get emotionally attached to final fantasy games character these these stories right these these worlds that you can just get yourself lost in and yeah and that's and i i agree i'm the exact same way as i would much rather play a game that has a kick-ass story than anything else because i just love it's it's like interactively playing a book right mm-hmm. you're 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 reading a book with your hands mm. and you're not blind mm-hmm. yes well uh, you can do there's certain things you can do in a video game with story that make it so much more interesting to do right like mm. that's i think why where some rpgs were caught in the middle like you talked about ones that are really text-based those are good for the people that that can jump in and be a text-based game like there are certain games that tell a good story without having the like pages and pages of text. Like the Bioshock games are great because the whole thing is laid out as, you know, you're playing this silent protagonist and really everything is you're discovering it as it goes. Mm-hmm. And it's all told through either like interactions with other people on your radio or hearing those like loop back tapes that you find throughout the thing. And you piece together the story like that. Like, only a video game can really do that. You can't really do that with a movie. You kind of have to be more direct about your storytelling. And some games do that very, very well. And some are too heavy-handed. Like GTA V did it really well with having main mission quests and sides, but emotionally involving, well, three different main characters in it, really. But, right. you know, there's also some that I, that just don't. And that was one of my issues with playing Final Fantasy Thirteen is that by the eight or nine hour mark or whenever I was playing it, I couldn't care about any of the people that I was mm. playing as. And I was like, oh, well, I'm really not invested and in not enjoying a game, so why am I going to keep going? 
Mm. And that's no, I, I think it's still storytelling in video games has always been a little bit secondary, even when they were making really great games like the Final Fantasy sixes and the Chrono Triggers. They were like the two percent. Yeah. And everybody else was sort of good gameplay. Throw a story together. I mean, they're using the Mario method, right? Like you have great gameplay and barely any story. That's fine. People will still play your game. Yeah, Whereas the story driven ones are a little disadvantaged because yeah. it's more effort and it doesn't always work. And I still have the yeah, I agree with that. And I still have the theory that people don't like RPGs. Like I, 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 I a theory that like Final Fantasy VII was a is was a fucking fluke as far as like hype for RPGs. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think people like RPGs anymore. I, if they did, we'd have them. Um, yeah. Because we have Call of Duty every year. Like, right. I mean, if people really like like one RPGs, they would flock to a game like Xenoblade. They would like Xenoblade Chronicles is probably the that Nino Kuni. Those two RPGs are two of the best RPGs of all time. You put it on your top ten or top twenty or whatever it is. Those two are among the best. They are mandatory playing for an RPG fan. Uh, they just simply fucking amazing. And I can't tell you anybody that I personally know that's played those games and beat them. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't, you know, and I know a lot, a lot of people who like RPGs, and nobody, nobody's played them. So, yeah, you know. and that's kind of it's been that way for a couple of generations too. Like, there's always a Nino Cooney or an Eternal Sonata or a, yeah. you know, like um, what's one I'm thinking of? Tales of Symphonia and Skies of Arcadia. Like, there's always those ones around, but you're right, they don't. Nobody takes the massive plunge to be like, and it's why it's probably why you know what, and I, I hate to say this, I really wish Square would go back to making RPGs that weren't Final Fantasy, and they could just do something, you know, without you're, you're the expectation guns, of it. Right? Yeah, the Chrono yeah. Triggers of the well, they world, do right? your, like, they do your um, your dragon, the Dragon, uh, Dragon games, Quest, yeah, but dragons. I mean they're already at eight Dragon Warriors, right? Like I don't, I don't necessarily want to see something with that name on. I just want to see them come yeah. out with like. Some random Parasite weird Eve. name, <laughs> yeah. Like Parasite Eve was great, and it was yeah. different, and it told an interesting story. Chrono, I guess they did Chrono Cross, so I can't really count Chrono Trigger. But... Don't don't count that game. <laughs> <laughs> they gave it's me okay. Weird. It's not. I've never had a weird. <laughs> you ever like ate something you had a weird taste in your mouth? Like after, you, like it was like a like a fucking tire. Like you bit into a tire or something. Like that's <laughs> like I actually have a taste in my mouth from playing that game, and it's like a tire. Like I bit yeah. into a fucking tire, and I'm playing that game. Like yeah, this is supposed to be fun and good. <laughs> And I know that like it, it smells like fun, but yeah. it tastes like tire. I don't. Yeah. I'm confused. No, I can so. see that. I I enjoyed it. I didn't play it until way way later. Like I picked it up, used like three or four years ago. I bought that bitch day played one. It. I got the day one edition on fucking on PS one. Yeah. Like <laughs> day like it said day one and everything. Day one edition. Fucking yeah. No, and that was that was right in the era where I stopped. I was going to college, so I stopped playing video games really for several years and kind of missed the whole ps2 era really but that was a good era man that's probably like a fucking golden age era for rpgs like they had you know had everything in there so yeah mm-hmm. um so i want to i want to ask you guys a question kind of side sidestepping a little bit um we can all kind of relate to hype and and excitement and and we talk about it with Final oh. fantasy 15 and and we've talked about it with you, No Man's Sky, and I think and, I know where you're going with this. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you do, but so um, <laughs> yesterday, today, yesterday, uh, today, I guess, um, Watch Dogs Two officially released, mm-hmm. and a lot of people are excited for it. Hype train, choo choo, San Francisco, um, which is funny because is there really a hype train for that game? At absolutely, the first there is. Yeah, really, like, like, and, like, like how big, like pretty big or well it's after the first one i would imagine that no one would really give a fuck about that game well here's 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 where i'm gonna kind of take this whole thing is okay um titanfall 2 another great yep. example titanfall yep. 1 great game had had awesome concept just died just fizzed out super fast um titanfall 2 came out two and a half weeks ago and and i just did some counting it is currently the 64th most viewed game on Twitch. Um, game, um, games that are currently beating Titanfall 2 include Shovel Knight, Clash Royale, Black, Des- Black so Desert, 
<laughs> um, Hold on, are you serious? Planet Coaster, well, World of well, Tanks. Black Desert did, did have a, a, a patch come out well, there. Yeah, but they only have 900 viewers. But, but right right now, well, as of 10 minutes ago, Titanfall 2 had less than 700 people watching. Now, just to give you an idea, Battlefield 1 currently has about 5,000 people, while the two Call of Duties combined have about 18,000 people. So... You talk about how there, there's a lot of hype for Titanfall 2. It comes out and a lot of praise for it. And a lot of people saying they enjoy the game. It gets good reviews. But I'm, I'm looking at it right now on Twitch and it looks like it's dying. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, Watch Dogs 2 is going to be another great example. Is like I want to I know what, tit- what Titanfall 2's sales are in four months from now versus what call of duty and battlefield sales are four months from now. And I can, Mm -hmm. I can remember like I was, I was a prime example. I bought Titanfall two when it, or Titanfall one, when it came out, I played the hell out of it. It was fun. And then a couple weeks later, you just were like, Oh yeah, Titanfall. And it just kind of was, was lost on the world. And, and now watchdogs two, it's almost like so many people forget the hype that was around watchdogs one with, um, the 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 official announced at E3 2013 and then the hype was so strong and then a trailer came out like six months later and it was like whoa this doesn't look the same and then the game comes out and it's people are playing it and they're like all right it's an okay game it got decent reviews but then everyone's just kind of like it was Grand Theft Auto 5 with hacking and everybody kind of has these disappointing thoughts about it and then all of a sudden Watch Dogs 2 comes out and everybody's choo-choo back on board. Oh my god, this mm. is great. Um, granted, there was a lot of people that were probably getting paid to play it through promotion. Um, but, I mean, currently, Watch Dogs is the number, the number six watch game on its release day. And the only games that are beating it are esports. But, it's... Why, why do we keep tricking ourselves? And, and, it's, and the other question is, too, is maybe... Are, are we okay with game companies getting a game wrong the first time to make it better the second time? Like yes. why? Because yes. like you look at Assassin's Creed as a prime example where Assassin's yeah, Creed yeah, 1 was mm-hmm. av- it, at, at its time, it was like, oh, this is a good game. And then Assassin's Creed 2 came out and everyone's like, whoa, Assassin's Creed 1 was terrible. Yep, but the problem with that statement is is that not every game is going to be... I mean, like, this game is going to be, if it's like that, it's fine. But, like, Assassin's Creed 1 is for us. I know it didn't lie to us. So, like, for me, Watch Dogs kind of lied to me. Right. Uh, you know, and, and also, like, I don't know. Like, for me, it was like, okay, this game's blatantly lied to me. You're showing me this in- intricate online system where, like, my friends can jump in and out of my games and all. And it's like, ah, it's kind of bullshit. Like, it's kind of a far-fetched to what, what actually you've seen it's kind of pure it's the pure mono syndrome uh what that game was and what what they said it was going to be like for me just this the you know like what i can forget them for the storyline because i can sh- i'm sure you can make a better storyline so if, if i hear like the story's like really good i'll check it out again i really right. will but that first game was such dog shit that i, I like i just wouldn't it's kind of like titanfall like i think the reason why titanfall isn't like you, you said it was it was good the general conception uh, perception of that game is that it was dog shit like people didn't play it because it didn't have a storyline the storyline was baked into the actual game and it was like okay this just really isn't that fun it's not that Wasn't it was it dog multiplayer shit so only much. it was multiplayer only but well the, they had a story but literally all the story was was the um like your um this is how to play the game and it was like 20 minutes long um yeah. but like that's that's the thing is I heard I, I heard so many people praising Titanfall two and how it's so much better than Call of Duty and I love this so much. Why why does it have six hundred people watching it at nine thirty p.m. Pacific time versus Call of Duty? Right, like that's the thing is these people talk about these games being good and then all of a sudden they're they're not they're not playing it anymore because and, it's not Call of Duty. Here I I have I have two words that starts to go with a lot of this and it it is I think. For the most part, uh, probably contributing to about 50% of the hype train of most games that are coming out. E3. If you go back and look at a bunch of games in the last 
five years, let's say. And E3 has been around a really long time before that. But once you started having the big, like, momentous game companies, console companies doing these big presentations, you look at the original, you know, stuff of The Division. You look at the original stuff of No Man's Sky. You look at the original stuff of Titanfall. You look at the original stuff for Watch Dogs. There's a lot more examples than just that. People see that stuff and go, oh, man, I'm getting really hyped for a game that may not come out for two years or more. And all that does in their head is create this idea of, oh, I can't wait until this game comes out. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. And everybody's a little bit guilty of getting on hype trains because of that. But because game companies are now taking this weird approach of, like, announcing things years in advance they're creating their own failure if the game isn't up to snuff or is even just a little below par expectations like Watch Dogs right. 2 could be really interesting and there is opposite versions of that I mean you could look at The Witcher and The Witcher games going back were all pretty good but The Witcher 1 was not a real popular game it gained in popularity because it was good they didn't it have like also, a crazy hype train to yeah it. but it was also PC only like, exactly and that's part people, of it and they looked and said a, like there was a gonna... cult following for that game though like that game like when it came out people were like okay this like if you had a pc it was like okay you got to play this game like the combat's very sluggish but this fucking game is good like this yeah. you know and that's the thing like it, they're right now they're promoting this hype of expectations they're showing these things and i mean no man's sky didn't deliver maybe on some of the things that they may or may not have promised that mm -hmm. probably doesn't have to do with e3 necessarily but I mean, Grover and I played The Division, and I Grover pre-ordered it when the first Division trailer on E3 came out, and it wasn't exactly how things ended up, and people got really hype over that game. And then when it came out, I, I enjoyed playing it because I could play with a group of four of us that were doing it, but on my own, I wouldn't have touched that game because it mm -hmm. didn't really, it didn't appeal to me. And then when it came out, people went... Okay, well, we were sort of promised all these things, and it's okay, seven and a half out of ten. Like, and it, and, it, and it's there's there's game journalism that's part of that as well, you know, with certain ads, right. journalism areas giving fucking seven point oh or seven point five to anything that breathes or has a multi million right. dollar budget. But mm, it just... it all feeds into this hype machine that is creating unrealistic expectations for so many triple A or even like just below triple A games. Right, and. Like I, I remember with with the division how there was all these thoughts about what it was going to be like, and and they released a patch this past week that has made so many different changes to the game, and the way a lot of people are saying is that they've basically made the game now what it should have been at release, and like that's that's frustrating because for me I find it very hard to want to go back and play the division right now, like I would, because of all the new stuff that's out and new that it's coming out. It's like now, now people are saying that the division is fixed and and great to play, but it's too late. It's mm -hmm. it's too you've you've already lost people's interest. And yeah, sure, you're gonna have people go back to it, and sure, you've had your dedicated player base, but it's it hasn't like why why is Destiny doing better? Because so many people were comparing Destiny and Division when the Division came out. Right, mm -hmm. and sure, there one is a first person and one is a third person, but they were kind of comparing that Destiny, Destiny people. Came out first. Destiny people are gonna like the division, right? And a lot of Destiny players and streamers moved over to the division for a month, three weeks, whatever it was, and then found themselves going right back to Destiny. And like that's the thing is why why is it acceptable for a game to release and then six months after its release? finally be the game that it was meant to be like and well, it's, no, not, it's not i don't acceptable. think it is no it's not no. acceptable like, right it's and that's why because look at the sales and, right. and that and that's why titanfall 2 is gonna not do as well because about of people's though. past memories like if if somebody went in and to take another full series out of it if somebody jumped into final fantasy 10 and didn't like it are they going to play any Final Fantasy game after that? Probably not. Uh, they might because they might hear the hype. So, like, going back to the psychological, you know, oh, you know, I didn't like 10, but, you know, it, it's, it's, I brought this up last week, and, it, and it's very, like, from, from a point of psychology, it's, it's an Axe Grover, uh, I forget what game it was about, but it's like, 
uh, people feel like they're being left out. So, like, if I tell you right now, Matt, I have this game coming out, and you probably will have no interest in playing it, but you can't have it. You instantly want the fucking game that you can't have because that's, your brain is fucking triggered to do that. So when we talk about, we start talking about collector's editions, we start talking about limited releases, we start talking about limited, like, you could play the game two days earlier for only through thirty nine nine nine. You know, uh, they do it with RPGs all the time. So, like, the, the, the thought of being left out. So, like, the, the, it happens. All, like, I know for me, if I don't buy a game on release, I cannot buy it. But, yeah. fuck, is it hard to not buy a game on release? Or, mm-hmm. like, like, World of Warcraft. Like, when an expansion comes out, it's like, I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to play it. Oh, fuck. Release day. Oh, or I want to be a part of the hype. <laughs> like, you, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a piece of, like, belonging. I want to belong a part of this group. I, yeah. Like, I want to experience this hype. Same thing with Black Friday. Like Black Friday, people go like I go. I go to Black Friday just to be part of the fucking hype. I guess that's right. what I do. You know, and and well, that's and why we time. same thing. That's why we go to Boxing Day. Is mm. yeah, we're there yeah. for you. But last Boxing Day, I didn't yeah. buy a single thing. And granted, that was because the sales were not as good because Black Friday in Canada is now becoming a bigger and better thing. But right. I was so goddamn excited to wake up at six a.m. There's one day a mm. year where I get excited to wake up at six a.m. <laughs> and that's Boxing Day, to get up early go to the stores and check out all the crap that's there and watch. And it's, it's, yeah, it's just the experience, right? So yeah. we didn't talk about this uh, at all, but the, the Nest Classic came out this week uh. and it was so fucking great because you know what I did for about two hours? Drove around stood, looking for one? Stood in line. Oh, yeah, that a boy. Instead, yep, and still didn't get one. And we, like, it was very interesting because it was like, man, I really haven't stood in line for a console since the PS3. Like, this is kind of it's kind of it's kind of interesting. The, la- the last time talking about standing in line, the last time I stood in line was the Wii, and and I and I got one, and then and then I remember after that, the the next time I stood in line was for Guitar Hero Three on Wii. There was a fu- <laughs> the Wii the Wii had so much hype around it, and Guitar Hero. <sighs> There was a lineup, and I remember getting there bright and early, <laughs> and I I waited in line for a fucking video game, I've, and I've never done that because any game that's popular enough now, you can pre-order and get midnight release, so you can walk to yep. your GameStop, you can walk to your Best Buy at midnight, pick it up and say thank you and and have a good night, right? <laughs> but with yeah. what I was reading with the with the NAS Classic was <laughs> contradicting things at GameStop is some people were going to a GameStop waiting in line. Getting there and then being told, "Oh, I'm sorry, they're they're on reserve. Like we only are giving a couple out yeah. to people waiting in line. Everything else is is people have reserved them." And then you hear another conflicting reports where people were reserving them, paid money to hold them, get to the store, and then the store people say, "Oh, we gave them all out to people waiting in line." Yeah. <laughs> So not only not only were people getting shafted by waiting in line, but people were getting shafted by putting them on hold as well and seeing the reviews and not reviews, but like people on Twitter saying, "GameStop, you ruined my kid's Christmas." Like, for- <laughs> so let's talk about this first. Yes, exactly. So let's talk about this for a second. If you want, so we talked about this last week with the you know for me like, okay, if you want to play those games, you know, like it's cheaper. In some instances, to just fucking because most people are only gonna play like one or two games, right? Most people can just go to an eBay and buy a fucking you know NES console. Like there's you know millions of these things out there. It's not like it's that hard to find. You go to eBay or probably yeah. even Amazon and get one. Yeah, you know. And, and I and, guarantee you, the probably the majority of the people that actually bought them or waited in line for them already had them at home and already had an old NES. It's the collector part. But let's of it. let's be honest. Life. What child? in 2016 would rather play excite bike and link and super mario and and contra super c over playing battlefield call of duty what like it's okay this child would right what here. child you are not a child you are an <laughs> asto- you are you are a nostalgia figure of the 90s yeah. that mm-hmm. to me that's that's who should be buying the nes classic is your people that grew up with an NES. There's gonna and, be a lot of people who are upset. But for Christmas. but it's like, if, <laughs> but if you think about it, what what ch- like people were saying that they wanted them for their kids. 
what no, kid? It's, 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 it's a straight up lie, right? Yeah. Because because there's no way a kid would be more excited for an NES Classic over a PS4 Pro or an Xbox One S. That is just so, fiction. Yeah, it'd be a very let's small go back to, percentage. Let's go back to the hype for a second because, like, I know for sure, like, my wife wants one because my wife legit wants to play one. Like, she legit. Right. She has a friend who got one just because. Hype. That's it. Right. Hype. And, and see, just, just the reason that I would want one. And the same thing, the reason the Battle Flag won one is because, A, we collect retro games, so it's we play them a lot, but we would we would make YouTube videos out of every single one of those fucking games <laughs> that's on there for, for entertainment yep. purposes. But you can't honestly tell me that the majority of people sitting at home going, you know, I really wish I could play Star Tropics right now. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that's not true. But then all of a sudden it's like, there's an NES class, these 30 games, 60 to- Oh my god! I I bet I bet you they're collecting yeah. dust by February, or well, even by so January. Like the Wii. Like the Wii? Mm-hmm. My Wii, Just my like Wii, Wii, my Wii is currently a a prop in my entertainment stand. <laughs> it is not so, yeah, plugged so there's in. something about there's something about belonging that people yeah. have to belong because mm-hmm. like dude, I had no idea like people were, like there was gonna be lines for those things. Like I was like, okay, cool. I I but people, hey, you you surprised me. You you really did. You well, and there's a, like, now I'm gonna the, fucking hunt to give my wife one for Christmas. Well, and right there's a whole other thing that goes with the NES Classic mm-hmm. that goes along with that idea of hype too. And it's it's funny how I don't know exactly why this is if people just don't pay attention, uh, which I think is a lot of it. Even before it came out, when Nintendo had statements about it, it's coming out on this date. We're releasing, you know, a limited amount of them initially, and we're going to release more in the coming weeks as we can look to meet demand, this and the other thing. And they even said, we're hoping to have some out, you know, so they can be in there for for the holiday shopping season, da, da, da. Well, I don't know if you looked up what this is looking like on Craigslist down in Louisiana, but up here in Canada, what the day, like not even a couple of hours after the release of it came out, they were on the Amazon Marketplace, and the mm-hmm. cheapest one you could get was four hundred and fifty dollars, which it's eighty mm-hmm. Canadian normally. Right, let me. And it started at four fifty, and went over a thousand dollars. There was that one. I think I don't know if Grover shared it when it came out. They showed like completed eBay auctions, and they were going for eight hundred, nine hundred, thousand mm. dollars. Okay. And they've actually now to the point where they're on our version of Craigslist, Kijiji. And there are people posting ads, not selling anything, but in the like classic console thing, saying like NES Classic, please read. And you click on it and go, and basically it's somebody saying, people, read this article. Nintendo's releasing more of them. Don't overpay for scalpers for this thing. Mm-hmm. I, I but remember. They're still happening. Well, I've got I've got eBay open right now. So November twelfth, one sold for seven thousand dollars. What? November tenth, one sold for sixty six hundred. Uh, November thirteenth, four grand, three grand, twenty seven hundred, two thousand, two thousand, and this was a couple days ago. Now, granted, I go to recent, and they're now selling for two eighty five, two sixty six, two fifty. Yeah, I think they're two sixty. The, like it's one it, price right now. Is, and it's yeah. it calms down. And the great example, another another example of this is the Fallout Four, Pip Boy Collector's Edition. It came out. People pre-orders were gone in a second, and they were selling on eBay for five hundred, seven hundred, a thousand dollars. And and I remember wanting one just from from a collection standpoint. I still haven't played the game, even though now I own it. But I I was looking on Kijiji, and people were selling them for two hundred and fifty, two hundred, and it was it was one hundred and sixty dollars Canadian retail, and I. I remember seeing there was a Kijiji, Kijiji ad, the exact same thing. A guy posted and said, Fallout 4 Pit Boy Edition. FYI, they're on sale on Best Buy right now. There's this many in stock online. They're this price. Don't buy any of these other things. So I saw that, went to Best Buy, and bought one for $160. <laughs> and like that's, like that's I look at, like I can probably bring it up right now. But it's it's that fucking hype train, right? Like, Yeah. I can go. Well, and it, I can go. Yeah, highest sold. So even even as of late, but highest sold as of late is they're selling for no more than like two hundred and fifty bucks because probably by now they are fresh out of stock. But I remember seeing them on eBay and people were paying a thousand dollars for. Really, all you were getting is is the game 
in a steel book and that fucking thing to wear on your wrist and and I and and the case and I I wanted to get it because I I started wanting to collect collectors editions of games because I'm you can call me a fuckboy whatever you want to call me but you're a fuckboy. Yeah, I'm a fuckboy, but it's yeah, like thank you. It's <laughs> is that is it worth spending that much money just to have it? Like am I no. am I am I better off with those 30 classic games or am I better off with $2000? Like Well, like when when you can <laughs> when when the choice is do I buy an NES classic or do I buy a decent used car? <laughs> That's not even a question. Can I pay my, like, I pay my bills for 3 10 months? Grand. So yeah. like you know who I imagine like buying with a ten grand is like Jeff Lawrence. Like you know your your uh, your prince in Dubai who doesn't know what <laughs> what yeah. allowance is, or... right. which is ridiculous and doesn't necessarily make it okay. But you're exactly right. It's somebody that spending that much money is nothing to them. Yeah, like it's probably sixty bucks to them. Right. Like the equivalent yeah. of sixty bucks. Like, oh, it's ten grand. <laughs> oh, That's what a deal! Bad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah like, I don't care. Like, okay, cool. Give me this system. Like, it's some people, you know, like money. Like, you gotta like. It's kind of weird. Money's weird now, right? Like, cause some some people have a lot of it, and most people, especially in America, have a lot of discretionary, you know, income. It's weird when you you live in a society where people like not just like one or two people. A bunch of, like the going price for the NES Classic right now is two hundred. That's like the 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 fair market value right now is two fifty. So like yeah. people are willing to price like that's like the going price. That is a modern day fucking console. That's what the the Switch is gonna go you for. Can, is you, you can you can get an yeah. Xbox One at on Black Friday for that price. Yes, but yeah. you know what Black Friday didn't have? I mean, you know what the the fucking Xbox One didn't have? Good games, Ex- Excite Bike and Star Tropics. <laughs> yeah. games. Nintendo, Nintendo. As much as fucking I hate on Nintendo a good bit, fucking Nintendo has fun games. Like my brother today, he's like, "Hey, look, uh, I want to get a console for my kids. It's the first console. Like they, they never had anything else besides the DS. Uh, I want something that like me and the wife can play. Mm-hmm. I want something that my kids can play together with with me and the wife. Uh, what do you suggest? What do you think I suggested him? Nintendo, probably. Yeah. A Wii U. I'm like, you know, he's like, I want to play Mario games. I'm like, cool. Right. Okay, you got Mario Kart. You got fucking, like, and, and I can honestly say, like, I was like, look, dude. I said, the Switch is coming out. He's like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't know what the fuck the Switch thing is. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I But, like, if I could play games with my kids and 30 minutes and have fun. Like, me and my son today, we played fucking Smash. We played Smash for, like, 20 or 30 minutes. Had fun. Played Donkey Kong for, like, 10 minutes until you got frustrated because that game's hard as fuck. <laughs> and, then, you know, played uh, some more Smash. Played some Mario. And uh, you know, played about an hour of video games and fucking had a blast, man. Let me you let know? me ask you this, Jofu. Mm. Can you play Skyrim on the bus with an Xbox One? <laughs> you can't. You can't. Can you girl. can you play not Skyrim? Yet. Can you not play HD Skyrim can't. while taking a dump with your Xbox One? Not, not HD. You can't, no sir. Mm. <laughs> God, you know what? I wish there was a console where I could play Skyrim on the bus. If, if only. If, there... Xbox One was more like the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> if Xbox One was more like Overwatch. Um, if a console was more like a game where <laughs> it's available on that console. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I, I'm, uh, so going back to like hype. Yeah, it's 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 psychological. Like a lot of these people. Like I know my my wife's friend. Like they put a picture. She she bought that fucking thing just to put a picture on Facebook. So like they got a picture <laughs> on Facebook. I can almost guarantee they will never touch it again. They'll never touch, unless like we go to the house and like, oh, check this out, you know. So yeah. it's uh, that, that's well, it. I mean, like, we it's... we live and it's not just video games. But we live in a world of impulse buying, right? And it's everything from like, why do you think chocolate bars are always right next to the counter at the grocery store? So you're ready to go yeah. and go. Oh, Kit Kat would be great right about now, right? Mm-hmm. Or it's only a dollar. It's only a dollar, yeah. Or um, on Black Friday and Boxing Day, it's like, you know what? I don't really need a new TV, but I I'm. I'm basically losing money not buying this 4K TV for six hundred dollars. <laughs> like, and that's and that's that's the thing is is whether it's a new pair of shoes or uh, a car. Well, I mean, a car is a little extreme, but like we 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 live in a world of impulse shopping, and mm-hmm. and especially when you look at like Watch Watch Dogs Two is a great example because. Not not only did they do an amazing job of making everyone forget that Watch Dogs One was a game, and how and how did they do that by, okay, you're no longer a guy 
with a wife and a son fighting for like running through Chicago trying to you know save that but now you're this hip young hacker dude and your hacker buddies and <laughs> now you're in a hip cool city like San Francisco hold and... on you skipped something you hmm. skipped something about Watch Dogs 1 is that you're a fucking mass murderer psychopath well I'm pretty sure in, in Watch Dogs Meh. 2 you're going to be a mass murdering psychopath as well but like, like Watch Dogs, like Grand Theft Auto, it makes sense. Like Grand Theft Auto, it's Grand Theft Auto. Like you're a fucking psychopath. In Watch Dogs, it's like you're supposed to be like this father figure, you know, trying to protect your kid, trying yeah. to protect the city, going around just killing everybody. <laughs> you're just like randomly just fucking, like you're, you're like in missions, like going just fucking randomly killing people. And that just, that for me, like just broke the immersion. I just, yeah. I couldn't play the game anymore. Like this does not make sense. This guy's like kill somebody fucking cops don't come because you hack something so cops don't fucking you know put one two and two together you know so mm. that, that game's weird yeah. so weird. i want to i want to talk about one more thing before we because we're gonna this week's gonna be a little bit of a shorter episode but um i'm looking at uh video game sales and the last reported uh week was the week of october 22nd so the week that battlefield one came out um, and it was also the week that Rise of the Tomb Raider came out on PS4. Now, I'm sure you guys remember Rise of the Tomb Raider. It came out on, on Xbox One, uh, timed exclusive, and it came out November 11th, the same day that Fallout 4 came out. What's that? Rise of the Tomb Raider. Okay. So it came out on Xbox the same day Fallout 4 came out. Terrible, terrible launch time. It sold like 110,000 copies its first week on okay. Xbox One. Yeah, it's terrible. Too came, bad, came out on PC in February. Kind of like Titan, Titanfall did. It like yeah. came out between like fucking. And that, that's Colossus, why like, I was I was curious know. to look at because um, Battlefield One, uh, it did two point two on PS4, one point one on Xbox One, and one hundred and forty thousand on PC. But so Rise of the Tomb Raider came out same day that Battlefield came out, and on PS4 did one hundred and fifty thousand units sold. This game has been out for one year on Xbox, but sold better on the timed, delayed console. Granted, you can you can argue that PS4 has almost two to one consoles out there, but mm -hmm. like it's when when are the developers going to realize that timed exclusives or exclusives are hurting them? Because I guarantee you, if if Rise of the Tomb Raider on PS4 comes out and PC comes out the same time as Xbox, whether it was on November 11, 2015, or whatever, you take a game that has 110,000 copies sold, and maybe it does 250,000 on PS4, and another 50,000 on PC, let's say. Like, why... I mean, I, and I guarantee you the answer is is probably Microsoft paid them more money than they'll make. A lot of there. money. They but paid them, they paid them, yeah. when they when probably... is that when is that going to stop or will it stop? Mm, because it won't. It and won't. I mean, prime example is Titanfall. Titanfall was a console <laughs> exclusive on Xbox One. The, the only point, and I've said this about consoles, and like I don't like I hate con the, the idea of consoles because consoles represent. It, it's it's terrible to consumers because we have it's called console exclusives, I should say. Right. So when you have console exclusives, it's like okay, well, for Jofu, Jofu has to buy each console that, that has a that has an exclusive that he wants to play. So like this is the first generation where I didn't like go out and buy a fucking Xbox One for a game that I want to play. Right. Now if it, if they if they had like an RPG that I want to play, I, I, like Final Fantasy 15 was like exclusive to Xbox One, I'd have an Xbox One S on my fucking. Well, you bought now. you bought a Wii U for Xenoblade. Of course, you know, and then, yeah. you know, that turned out really well, though. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> you, got, you got lucky. Yeah. You got a five year old. Yeah. So I, got I got super lucky with that one. But like I've, I've bought consoles in the past for single games. You know, I've, yeah. I've built computers to play single games. Right. So like for me, you know, for me, I've, you know, I enjoy that. I, I enjoy that process, whatever it is it, it, fun for me. But like. I shouldn't have to buy an Xbox One, a PS4, and a Wii U to play the fucking games that I like. Right, especially, yeah. especially if it's just like one or two games, or like three games. Now, like a Nintendo system, guess what? There's a bunch of fucking games I can't get anywhere else. So, like, I understand that. But like, if something's on like PC, and uh, like PC saved me this generation, uh, you know, and and a little bit of last generation, well, mostly this generation because most games that I want to play come out on fucking PC. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's kind of there's still I think a lot of 
console companies are still operating on that whole like 16 bit generation method of well, we've got exclusive this, we got exclusive this, we got blast processing right. this, we got more colors this. Like well, they're always trying to one up each other. And they, they kind of like it, they even tried it last generation too and almost worked because there were Xbox 360 exclusives for a long yeah. time. Yeah. I mean, Bioshock's the biggest one, but they eventually, it, people said, okay, the PS3 is over their hump. We can program for it now. And they split it up, but they're still, they're finding ways to try and like one up each other in the most microscopic ways. Yeah. yeah. And clearly, like as DLC, you said, with the numbers get, for things, it's not working. Yeah. You get DLC and you get all this other shit. Like if you're, if you're Microsoft, you're, you're banking on, because like, like, can we all agree that there's not too much difference from the PS4 and the Xbox? Like there's yeah, virtually no, there's virtually virtually for the most like, part, they're pretty similar. Yeah. Like, like we could probably make a long list of things. Like the like biggest, the biggest difference is the controller. <laughs> okay, so take away the controller because I, because I can make the argument that okay, if if the controller is the biggest difference, then why don't you just fucking play on PC because you can hook up either controller and PC. Yeah. If we're talking, if we're talking just a controller, so at that point I'm kind of like okay, you know, uh, fuck console, you know. Uh, which I'm very biased against consoles. Right. Uh, since there's not, not too much, you know, difference for them. If I'm Microsoft, or if I'm Sony, you know what I want the most of? I want exclusives. So mm. I'm gonna do everything I can to to save my console because there's really in in, in this market there's nothing to 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 make us different. I I can't differentiate because right. we're so fucking we're so the same now. Well, yeah. and, that, and that's what we're starting to see with games aren't necessarily being exclusive, but content is being timed exclusive. Like Call of Duty, Call of Duty's, yeah, Call of Duty is one of the most famous ones for. Yeah. Um, Play this for, map forever, first on forever, this it was the DLC packs would be released on Xbox first, <laughs> and then yep. when when PS4 sales took off and there was more PS4s in the world, they with Black Ops Three they swapped to PS4. Uh, the Division is the Division DLC. Um, got announced, and I went to go play it, and I discovered that it wasn't on my PS4. I had to wait an extra 30 days for it. And That shit pisses me off, man. Yeah, so it that's, really does. And, that, and that's the thing, is to be honest, I was I was really excited. Division, I'll talk about this game again. I was really excited to look into the DLC, and, and, I, and I, I see Twitch streamers are playing it, and I was like, oh, dude, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re-download Division and check it out. And then I realized, oh, I, I have a PlayStation, so my content doesn't come out for another 30 days. And in yeah. 30 days' time, I forgot about it. And you probably felt betrayed too. You probably got pissed off a little bit. Uh, I know that when I purchased the season pass for it, I was not told that stuff was, or I was, it was yeah. not clear to yeah. me that it was timed exclusive. And and maybe that's maybe that's my fault. Maybe it isn't. But so that whole that whole feeling of belonging, so that psychological mm-hmm. thing, like I, like I want to be a part of the hype. And you're like, okay, cool. I bought the season pass. I did this. Or even if you don't buy a season pass, you want to be a part of the hype. And then like you're blocked off, and there's nothing you can do about it unless you like buy a whole new console. Right. Like that. Instead of building hype for that, you know what you're doing. You're fucking. You're you're building disloyal customers. Well, Ooh, and that's yeah. like with with Call of Duty. Call of Duty to to get thirty days, or to feel to be an Xbox One player, and mm-hmm. have to play the old maps for thirty days while all the PlayStation boys are playing the new stuff already. Like, unless if unless, you're a PlayStation boy, you're like suck it, nerds. Yeah, exactly. And and it was the same yep. thing when when Xbox had it. It was like yep. fuck Flash you, PlayStation Mercy. boys, right? Yep. But like that's the thing is I feel like, and and sure the companies are making all kinds of money off of it because I don't even want to know what the figures are for for locking down a timed exclusive contract. But <laughs> like I know I know I I can guarantee you that I I bought the season pass for the division when it came out. That was I was hyped for the game and and I was hyped for the content because I was I was watching the divisions stream. They were talking about it themselves, and then. By the time it comes out, and I realize I can't play it, well, the the hype dies down, right? So I'm I'm curious if there was a if there was a case study as to what would be more beneficial the the guaranteed check that they get from a company versus actual players, like Titan, Titanfall Two, great example, it's having having it being not even in the top fifty games watched on Twitch during prime time on a weeknight. And and I I mean sales numbers haven't been updated yet, but to show the battle you know, to show the Battlefield One sold almost four million copies its first week, and then you hear that Titanfall Two, which came out a week later, did terrible, and and it's already fifty percent off, and it's being advertised as like twenty six bucks on Black Friday. You know why there's gonna be a Titanfall Three? Um, 
because Microsoft needs it. Well, but it's not exclusive, they, right? They, there's there's uh, there's it, nothing exclusive with Titanfall. I thought Titanfall is only on the Xbox Titanfall one. Two first is one on, was Titanfall Two is on PS4, PC, and Xbox. Ah, oh, so, yeah, the first oh, one was an exclusive. And they and they had, oh, they okay. admitted that that was a mistake in the first one, which is why. Yeah, because they only sold like a fucking million copies. Like I, I, I don't like, remember what the numbers were, but yeah, going back to an early conversation, we're talking about like what you know why wasn't you know people why why didn't people like you know forgive them for Titanfall One or whatever the conversation was, right. but that game didn't have a big following to. To begin with, like it, only it, a million people played the game. It, it had promise and then literally just dropped off the face of the earth. But no one yeah. played it. It's like by, right. by the time people actually had, because like remember, nobody had Xbox One last year or like whenever this game came out. So like yeah. this game comes out. It was, nobody, I think it was a launch title, to be honest. It was okay. So like literally, no one has a fucking Xbox well, One. It had it had by more the, players on Xbox 360 than it did on Xbox One. Okay, yeah. there you go. Mm-hmm. I mean, and a million people bought it. So you talk about maybe two hundred thousand people on the Xbox One that had it. You know, I, I mean, yeah, yeah, it could be. I don't know only because it was a launch title. So like, they basically bought it out of necessity. <laughs> could be. Yeah. Let's see if I can. Here's find here's it a fun show. here's a fun quiz for you both. I just thought of this. We were talking about it. Name me the last console exclusive game for anybody other than Nintendo. Let's say because they're a different. Oh break. God. But that I like had, that, that made you be like, I need to play that, so I will buy a console. Name me the last one you can think of. The Last of Us. I bought a PS3 for The Last of Us. And I didn't play it until it came out on PS4. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So we got one. Any others you can think of? I can't. <sighs> There's your answer. That's the, realistically, that's, the only, that's the only time I realistically ever console exclusives like that are the killer app have gone by the wayside and realistically the only like if you look back there's really only one that's continued to be the one in the series that people want to play that's halo that's it well like yeah. really to be fair you, i know look at I know that a lot started of... the whole Xbox. That's why it exists is because of the first two Halos. Like people that had played video games for a long time weren't jumping on the original Xbox because it was this gigantic thing that was larger than their VCR and, and the didn't have all sucked. that many games. And the controller was brutal. They changed the controller and Halo came out. And now we have Microsoft as a player in the video game industry. Other than that, like... I'm got been... lucky with Halo. Just think about yeah. it now. Yeah, wow, holy shit, they did. Uh... Yeah. But I mean, there's like there's The Last of Us. There's I know I know people War. that I know people that bought a PS4 to play Bloodborne. And Bloodborne's on both though. No, Bloodborne is a PS4 no, exclusive. No, it's, it's exclusive. Really? I'm trying to think why I bought a PS. Why did I buy a PS4? Probably just to have one, right? You bought yeah, one just to Netflix. have one. Netflix and chill. Yeah, I think I just bought one just to have one because I, like, I, I wanted to have one. I bought yeah. one because I wanted the next console. And I, I chose. I, I chose. I chose based on E3. I was. I. I didn't know which one I wanted, and then yeah. E3 is when I chose. And not. Not because. Of, and that's the fucked up part is I didn't choose because of its exclusives or its performance or anything. I chose it because PS4's conference at E3 had cooler shit. How fucked up is that? Movies, movies, movies. <laughs> like, games, like again, sports, the, ga- sports, the games sports. that I the games that I pre ordered that first E3 were Watch Dogs Division and Destiny. Not one of them were exclusive. Not one of them is better on one console than the other. I mean, player bla- player base for Destiny is... I, I don't know what the player base is, but... Like, Watch Dogs, I've, I played two hours of it. And, like, prime example. I, the, day, the day I bought... Or the day my PS4 shipped to me, I bought Assassin's Creed Black Flag, Knack, and... Um, the freaking... What's the game? Mark, I can't remember what I bought for my PS4 when I first got it. That's what I'm trying to tell you right now. I, I can't even... Kill, I, Killzone Shadowfall. So I bought, right. I bought those three games. I have not played Knack at all. Killzone is awful. And I, I haven't finished, but I've invested a lot of time into Black Flag. So I'm a prime example of, of the fucking hype train. And, I'll, and yeah. I'll, I'll be the first to admit, I've calmed down in recent years with the fucking choo-chooing, but... I I, I bought I bought yeah you I know, bought this a, year just division came out this year you remember that right yeah but by the time division came out I was out of hype the hype was gone I was just um, I was just glad that the game had come out <laughs> kind of like I am with Final Fantasy 15 yeah exactly but yeah. so so here's here's a Titanfall one globally 
did. Oh shit, where was it? Uh, globally, Titanfall's sales were two point nine five million on. Okay, the, that's, that's respectable. On, that's, that's really respectable. Yeah, sorry, two point nine five on Xbox. Okay. Yeah. Um, it did. 1.36 on Xbox 360 and 0.56 on PC. Okay. So, yeah. okay, but I guarantee you a lot of those were... Remember, Xbox One had a Titanfall exclusive console bundle. that you could buy. Bundle. That's the thing is, the bundles piss me off as a whole, but... Um, I don't mind bundles. That's a whole other topic. Um, what was the... I wish there was the Final Fantasy XV bundle, PS4 bundle. I'd get that. There's one in Japan, apparently. Yeah, they're, they're, Japan gets all the cool shit. Yeah, so fuck those. I um, I can't say that I weighed my goal was in buying a PS4 was to wait a little bit until they had some of the games that I was looking for. Like, oh yeah, okay, now I really want to play that. And then I bought one early, anyways, just because it was time to buy one early. And was still waiting for early. It. You, well, like you bought it on Boxing Day, two thousand and fifteen. Yeah, two a year plus after it year, been out. two plus two years plus after years, it had been out. Right. But it, honestly, there wasn't. Had there like, had the last Guardian come out in between there, mm -hmm. I'd have bought it. Yep. Um, and the, the, like I was the things I was looking for weren't really coming out, and then it was Boxing Day, and they were on sale, so I bought one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll I'll probably wait to talk more about this subject until next week. But the PS4 Pro also came out, and and again that just to tie in with hype, another prime example of someone some something being purchased for hype. I'd I'd love to know the numbers. Um, and again, I'll, I'll, we'll look into it more next episode, but how many people who bought a PS4 Pro do not have a 4K TV? I would love to have the numbers, like, <laughs> yeah. percentage-wise. So that was most. not even 4K, but it needs to be HDR, because, like, HDR is the thing they keep hyping, right? So, like, yeah. I think that Best Buy TV Casey was telling me about is, uh, it was, like, 700 bucks, and, I mean, it was a fucking awesome deal, like, really good deal, but it doesn't have HDR. It's, it's, the TV actually wasn't even 4K, it's, like... 2100 something well there's that's the thing is there's two different versions of 4k right yeah. it's like it's like how there's 1080i and 1080p mm -hmm. it's kind of like yeah. that there's there's two yeah, different resolutions yeah. for 4k which is it's yeah. which is weird but i guess that's no different than saying like like 720p is still high definition but 1080p is better high definition right like yeah, that's you, that's you what's be better that's you what's always be better up. but um <laughs> yeah so i think guys now's a good time to probably wrap things up battlefight do you have any closing thoughts on the first and last episode four of the terrible games podcast back to more desert bus back to more desert bus Des De desertbus.org yeah it's awesome go cool. um, they, they have they they you know what i will say and i always am impressed by when they do this some of the handmade things they yeah. give away and do auctions for holy crap they did like a full-on Four foot long carbon fiber, like so sharp they had to put a cover around it. Legend of Zelda Master Sword, like handcrafted one of a kind. It was disgusting. Yeah. And they like they did they were doing like ten dollar donations to get in on the draw for it, and they did twelve thousand dollars of donations for that item alone. Yeah. Oh wow. Crazy. Not only that, like anyway. there was that uh, that R two D two and BB eight blanket that was handmade and. And plushies yeah. that are handmade, and and just the the commitment that that people have to this event, and and plenty of other events too like it. But they uh, they they partner their their charity is Child's Play, and it's it's kind of it's kind of too bad because they Desert Bus happens right when Extra Life's big push is. Yeah, they so it's cross it's over, kind yeah. of a weird timing, but uh, Child's Play is. Uh, is based out of Seattle and was started by the guys that, uh, uh that PAX run PAX. Yeah. Um, but and just, again, it's the exact same charity where you're trying to put, uh, put video games and consoles into sick kids hands so that they can forget about the pain and suffering they have and instead inflict pain and suffering on others through video games. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's a good cause. It's super nerdy, but I like it. Yeah. Joe, how about you? <laughs> Any closing thoughts for the week? Oh, uh, so far, Fantasy Fourteen is closer. Fifteen. Uh, 15. Yep, that one. Fifteen. Sorry. 15. <laughs> yep, it's closer. It's getting closer and closer. Tick 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 tick. It's interesting. Tick, tick, tick. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still debating on getting a PS4 Pro. So that's uh, I'll if I if I can get a good Black Friday deal, I'll probably uh probably I'm getting one. Uh, when is Black yeah. Friday again? Is it next 25th? Friday? Thanksgiving. Okay. 
yeah. 25th well, we, or 24th Thanksgiving is different for us. Yeah. Uh, and thanks, because that's the thing is Thanksgiving in the U.S. is always on a Thursday versus it's always on a Sunday in Canada. Yeah. So. Yeah. And we get to yeah. watch the Dallas Cowboys play against the Detroit. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, and there was something else I wanted to say, uh, but I, I can't remember, so it probably wouldn't. Uh, save it. Important save it for the first and last episode five of the Terrible Game Podcast. Yeah, I can't wait. It's gonna be exciting. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, oh, fuck! We've oh shit. Hmm. Super Mario Run comes out uh, December fifteenth. Super Mario Run. Oh, guys, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Super Mario Run. Super Mario Run. Yeah, it's the first iOS fucking oh, Mario. Oh game. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know how much it costs, Grover? Um, I'm actually a, excited about this. A dollar ninety nine. Nope. Hmm. Ten dollars. That's expensive for a phone game. Nope. That's Fuck not that. It's not expensive because you know what's expensive? Microtransactions. <laughs> if, uh, if you will kindly guide yourselves to episode three of the Terrible Game Podcast, or two, can't remember which one, where we talk about microtransactions and fuckboys like Jofu purchasing whales. those microtransactions. Like a, what's, a, what's a small whale? I'm, I'm, whatever a small little whale is in there. I'm a dolphin. <laughs> Guarantee you get to level three before you start paying for winning. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can grind to level ten in three hours, or you can buy this magical coin that just gets you there. <sighs> fuck you, fuck you, Koopa kids! I want to go to Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll. Uh, uh, so what, when, is, when does it come out? Uh, December fifteenth. Oh, so, so we have lots of time before we talk about that. But, yeah, is uh, anything else coming this month before we end? Um. I mean, Dishonored Final 2, Fantasy, Dishonored 2 came one. out this week as well. Oh, yeah. Um, Interesting or not? I, I can't play that. Tyr- that Tyranny good. came out. Uh, yep. Watch Dogs 2 came out. Um, I mean, the big release at the end of the month is Final Fantasy, obviously. And then so I think, I think December, December 6th has a few as well. So Are we are we done with games for this year? Like, is that, was, like that, was that it? Like, well, I mean, no- the thing is, is a bunch, a bunch of the games that were supposed to be out in November and December got pushed back, right? Yeah. Like, Last Guardian is now March. Yeah. Which was supposed to be South December Park 6th. South March. Park was supposed to be December 6th. It got pushed back to March. So, but I mean, you, you look at it is we had Call of Duty, Battlefield, Titanfall, Watch Dogs, Dishonored. That's that's your it's holiday. Stacked, that's your holiday shopping already. right there, right? That's um, kind of Witcher, terrible. Witcher 3 has its complete edition that just came out, so that's being pushed. Yeah. Um, NES Battle, Classic. Battlefront. Yeah. Ba- Battle, Battlefront soon to be released. Actually, I think it came out today. The okay. the <laughs> just kidding. Here's a cheap version of everything for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thanks, EA. But yeah, I think with my closing thoughts, I'll just say whether you play on PS4, Xbox, or PC, be a gamer. Love each other. Oh, oh don't don't, don't be Just don't cancel. be a fuck I, I boy. <laughs> fuck you. What's the what's the 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 line? My favorite video game is video game. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm looking forward to yeah a little bit of downtime that uh, um, with the holiday season coming up and I think not having a lot of games coming out and wanting to play is you can take a game like Final Fantasy and just give your full attention to it right and I think games like that deserve your full attention because if you're kind of off and oning with a game like that it's not uh, it's not how they're meant to be played they're meant to be just just indulged in and loved. So ask for Final Fantasy XV for Christmas so that you can just spend your holidays on whatever planet it is. And So, and Grover, what you're saying feels. is that you, you have video <laughs> games sitting around collecting dust that you haven't played yet that you're looking at? Uh, I will point you to Exhibit A, my collection of video games. <laughs> it's funny, I always talk about it. It's like, oh, I should play this game, and then I just play Overwatch instead. But Overwatch is fun. Overwatch. Apparently, they had a new patch release today that I got to read about. So, but uh, yeah, guys, oh, let's my wrap up. Final, oh, God. final joke of the day. Just mm. thought of this when we were talking about Watch Dogs Two. Didn't get a chance to say it. How many of the people that are watching and playing Watch Dogs Two are disappointed that Sombra's not in it? Bum, bum, ba, dum. The new Overwatch champion. Terrible joke. It's a bad joke. Bad joke is bad. Oh. And on that note, I don't get it. Okay. Close she she first hacks things as part and of last character. episode four of the Terrible Game Podcast. My name is Grover. Joined as always by Battle Flag. That's me. And Jofu. Mm-hmm. You guys have a lovely day, and we will see you next time. Bye bye.